and welcome to the anime chapters on Next Legacy Radio. I am branded alongside Troy Mind Right. Yes, and sir. we got something for the people that is gonna be historic in a lot of ways. We gonna we gonna tap in and talk about a lot of things regarding this series that I let my man Troy Mindwright discuss and talk about as well. So with this being the first chapter of the anime series on Next Legacy Radio, Mr. Myright, give the people a little one-two about what we're talking about. And before you do that, spoiler alert for all those people out there who haven't tapped in to listen to and to see what we are discussing. So, Mr. Myright, let the people know what we're talking about. All right, listen, people. Today we are officially launching the anime chapters on Next Legacy Radio. Yeah, y'all heard me right. The anime chapters, man. It's all good. Listen, this first chapter, though, whoo, this first chapter, man, we gonna be discussing a show that's unforgettable, a heart-wrenching show, one that's gonna leave a real scar on you, but it's going to have you addicted at the same time. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, man, I'm talking about the dark fantasy known as Berserk by the late, great Kentaro Miura. And on top of that, when we air, it's going to be his birthday. So happy birthday, rest in peace to Kentaro Miura, man. Listen, to all my Berserk heads out there, y'all know what time it is. For the ones who's just now getting up on it, we gonna break it down for you, man. We gonna let you know the one twos and, and the, the ins and outs, the characters, the, the setting, all that. Just like my man said, spoiler alert. So maybe the new heads, if y'all wanna get into it, y'all shouldn't even listen. As a matter of fact, cause spoilers. But listen, <laughs> that's what we. And before we dig, it be, and before we dig and dive deep into the entire season of it, um, Kentaro Miura, as my man Myright said, passed away May 6th of this year. And when this airs, this airs in honor of his birthday. So I'm going to start there first. Um, this, this, this manga series sold 50 million copies, one of the best selling manga series of all time. And this is my first time really tapping into his world and being absorbed in all things that is. So I did a little digging and some research on this man. Um, and I just got to tell you, and before, you know, we, we start diving deep in the berserk, just, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my thoughts about him and, you know, his writing talents and, you know, how I feel like I've, I've captured something in, in a sense as far as just how he fleshed out his, his, his character's, um, his writing was brilliant. Right, right, right man. Like, um, hands down, some of the deepest shit that I've ever experienced in life of doing, you know, not just anime, though. It, it took me on a different journey that I wasn't even expecting when my man Mindwriter put me on this game, right? So, Kentaro, uh, man, I'm, rest in peace, first off, but also brilliant. I mean, I could say brilliant. I could say thought provoking. So when you when you think about it, my right, he fleshed out so many different characters during this stretch. And we got to know a lot of these people, um, not just what happened, how it happened, but how how they became who they became, right? So I had to say off top, you know what I mean, to start this, that he needs to be acknowledged as one of the best writers and showrunners of all time. You feel me? Your thoughts. Listen, man, I a thousand percent agree. And not only that, like, listen, man, um, I I highly recommend you check out the manga because in the manga, this man's level of detail that he puts into every panel and the way he really like draws his stuff is impeccable. Like his yo, his style of drawing is unlike no other. Like, each page, you could tell he took hours 
drawn this one scene because the details is ridiculous. Like, trust me when I tell you, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and maybe that's why Berserk never really continued far as on a, a, a level far as like an anime because a lot of people can't duplicate that style. Real talk. They can't duplicate it. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, and Troy, and Troy, I'm glad it didn't. I'm Matt. I'm glad it didn't because, and I'll tell you why later. But I'm just glad it didn't continue. I, I, I'll tell you why. I got oh, I got so much I want to talk about, but I'm glad it didn't. But yeah, man, you know, definitely a big condolences to you know his family, friends, those 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 closest to him. You know, um, we as fans, we gonna thank him always. We gonna praise him for what he gave us, as far as his peace and. You know the the things that he contributed to the manga community in the world of anime, man. You know. Hey, and on that note, we're gonna dedicate this one to him and his inspiration because this inspired me in a lot of different ways. So, um, we here live on the AC Anime Chapters on Next Legacy Radio. So let's get it on. Let's get it on. Hey, let's get it let's get it on. Let's get it cracking. All right, so, Brian, look, right? All right, so let me just straight, you know, come out the gate and say, my man's put me up on Berserk back in 2013. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, like it's just a regular show or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm watching a lot of things at that time. So I'm like, all right, you know, okay, let me add this onto my list. Go ahead and knock this off. It's only 25 episodes. I'm like, this ain't nothing, right? So, <clears throat> right. watching it, whatever. Now, um, it ends up changing my life, dog. Sort of like how you said at the, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, once I finish watching, I'm like, okay, now this shit is definitely top tier. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a different viewer of anime now like I'm not in the same class with these kids watching anime now like I'm in a higher class after watching Berserk <laughs> <laughs> feel me right you know what I'm saying right. so I'm like you know, I had to put you up on it cause you new to the world of anime so I'm like yeah my man gotta get initiated I had to initiate my man through Berserk <laughs> So, as you said, Troy, I was still a novice at anime. My daughter put me on, you know, year plus, and, you know, all the shows that I'm not going to name because it's really all about Berserk right now. So, literally, I've been put up on game, but when you told me about Berserk and I started tapping into it, and I was, you know, I wasn't die. I didn't dive deep into it. I, I think it really started to change my approach or my opinion and my feelings about where this was going. Probably around episode three, four, five, right? So I really started to kind of like, okay, what the hell is this? What is going on? Why is this the way it is? This, that, and the other, right? So this, this, like you. It has been out for a while, right? So if your man put you up on this in 2013 and here it is 2021, the impact since this show, uh, since this berserk took place, and this was, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Troy, this, this anime has been out late 90s, early 2000s, something like that. Am, am, yeah, I, am yeah. I correct? Yeah. So, so this, so this put up. it in. And the manga been out since 1989, I believe. Wow. So this yeah. has been felt through decades, Troy. Think about it. This yeah, has been man. felt through decades. The people putting people on and people seeing what this is and, you know, these character developments and how it was and how it is, and people have so many different opinions about it. This has been felt throughout years and years upon decades, and people still feel the way that I feel and the way that you feel and people out there that's listening to the way they feel about some of these characters and how this was driven into certain different ways. So, I mean, the origin of how, how we tap into this is very ironic and unique. And, right. it, and we're going to tell the people how we feel about certain things about the process of Berserk 
each, you know, episode. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going one through 25, so we're going to bounce around a bunch right. of different ways when it comes You're to that. But the points of the, uh, yes. the art. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And I and let me let me start let me start off by saying like my whole thing when I first tapped into this and I was lo- and I was looking and I was like okay I need to figure out what is this what is going on what is this what is this all about really and the backdrop again spoiler alert for everybody out there who haven't tapped into it and if you do you're gonna hear us talk and you're gonna be probably want to see and check out where to go find it and stuff like that. It's easy right. to find. You got a Google search, Berserk, find that thing, embrace yourself in it, and tap in, right? So, look, this whole thing set off with me not knowing about certain characters about this this whole tap in. So, as a novice, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, all right, who should I root for, who should I not? So, I was introduced to, I was introduced to Guts, Griffin, Casca, those are like the three main ones that we're going to definitely talk about, and obviously we're going to talk about a whole lot more. But mm-hmm. I felt like this, and I want your thoughts before we really dig deep into it as well. So I had no clue that I was going to love and hate those three people at the same time. <laughs> and, it, and, it got, and it got me into a situation where I don't know who I'm rooting for, and I don't know why it got to where it got to, because it moved me to a certain degree where it's just like, man, my, my feelings are all over the place. And I just surrounded those three because those are obviously the main characters, but there were so many different subplots with right, each right. episode that led into where things got to. So what are your thoughts when you first tapped into it, when your man first put you on in 2013 and how you feel about it now? I mean, bro, truthfully, you know, um, See, Guts is, Guts is my favorite character in this shit. I'm not going to hold you, like, you know what I'm saying? Because his whole story is just going against fate, even from the jump, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was born from the corpse of a hanging woman, bro. Like, what type, like, what type of shit is that, bro? Like, he wasn't right. supposed to be alive, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and then he's scooped up by this dude Gambino, you know what I'm saying? You know, he's 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 raised by him and these mercenaries. You know what I'm saying? Like they they teaching him shit, they getting him ready for war. And then next thing you know, you know what I'm saying, like the very man that he looks up to ends up selling him for you know what I'm saying? Like, you know for great basically. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. real talk. Then this nigga had a kill Oh, come on, bro. Like, Gut, Gut Story was a struggler from the beginning. From the beginning. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't even fuck with the Hawks at first. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, they, right. You know, like, they came fucking with him. And then he just defended himself. Next thing you know, the nigga uh, Griffith comes. You know what I'm saying? That he take take Guts down and then ends up taking a liking to him, which is a whole nother can of worms with that motherfucker but all right so let, let me let me try let me tap in with that that moment right there when griffith basically was like look let's duel if i win you stay and you right. be a part of this so when you think about it between whatever's going on between Griffin at that particular time, and we're going to talk about that a little later, because a lot of his backstory, to me, I always felt like was a prelude to how things began, everything that shaped up in the middle and how it ended. But that moment right there was a moment where, listen, Troy, was this already pre-planned? Was this already out there that he knew he was going to beat Guts? So he basically was already telling the tale because that's why he wanted him with the Hawks so he can go ahead and finish his agenda, which we will discuss later. To me, I always felt like that's why Griffin was so confident, maybe overconfident, maybe like to the point where it was cockiness too that he knew he had the better hand. 
So that's why he was able to manipulate the situation and say, yo, when you stay, you're going to be either my lieutenant, second in command, whatever the hell, because I still got something for you. I still got something for you to deal with or do. So that's why I feel like if Gus would have took the challenge, if he would have won, because think about it. Everybody that's seen this and the people that's about to see this now, you're going you're gonna to look at Gus' story like my man Mind Right say, that nigga was legendary. Right. You know what I mean? He did some legendary shit. So how was it that he was not able to take down Griffin at all? But we'll talk about that again later because there's right. another challenge in another episode. Where we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. But in this beginning right here, Troy, that was my thoughts. I was thinking watching that that I was like, yo, how's this man not going to – I mean, okay, so Griffin did – he got what he got. He made sure that Gus still was on his team because that's what he wanted. Was it predetermined? Did he already know this? Um, that part is up for speculation, you know what I'm saying, because I know, like, the core themes of this story is, like, you know, dreams and fate and, you know, uh, causality and stuff like that. And that causality shit, you know, uh, that's basically what the narrator was saying every show. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, you know, that quick little 10 seconds with him him talking, like, that's what he's talking about, like, that causality thing. So, I mean, honestly, it being predetermined, like, I feel like that in a sense, man. Like, you know, Guts, at that time, he represented a missing piece to, you know, uh, Griffith's whole plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, he represented that missing piece. And Guts played his part to a T. He played his part, you know, like he became the commander. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, got his own little squad following him and, and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I still feel like Guts was trying to find himself throughout all the battles and throughout all the people, you know what I'm saying, that they came across and all that, that they dealt with, he was still trying to find himself, which ended up making him make that move that we're going to talk about a little later, man. But, yo, let's... um. Let's jump to Casca, man. Like, how do you feel about Casca, man? Because Casca is definitely my second favorite. I love Gus and Casca. I love both of them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, how you feel about her Costca, story? Casca is someone who I feel like, you know, I have, I don't necessarily, I have more of a love-hate. Not 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 necessarily love hate with Gus Griffin. I'll tell y'all a little bit more about his ass in a minute. Right, <laughs> Costa to me is more of the missing link, the kind of person that I feel like I'm trying to put this into decent words as far as how I feel about her because misunderstood. I could probably say very aggressive. And then if you really flesh out her character and her story, uh, you know, and especially there was an episode where there was a real true background as far as to who she is and how she came to be, I respect her and understand her anger and her motivation a lot clearer now. Um, I was rooting for her. And it was uh, it, it was a situation, you know, a few episodes in where I just used to be like, man, why the fuck is she angry all the goddamn time? Like, <laughs> a lot what's of your fucking that. problem? A lot of people. Every time. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not just with one person, but with yeah, everybody. Well, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, what the fuck, right? So I get it. After the episode really explained and fleshed out her character, meeting Griffin, how they met, how they got to where they got to as far as what her choice was. But again, I'm going to go back, really, Troy, and talk to you about that, though, because as I intertwine Costa's um, way of life and how she lived before Griffin, did right, Griffin right. basically pick and choose that scenario to save her, to give her a choice, 
and let that choice be, look, I want to come with you. You know what I mean? Did that man predetermine that as well? You feel what I mean? So, man. Right. Listen, I see I see where you're getting at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have a feeling that, you know, that causality, predetermination aspect basically played a part in him not only getting them, but basically getting his whole army, kind of, right? Okay, see, there you go. Because, look, is that is that not part of life? You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, it is. In a lot of ways, you get certain things that, you know what I'm saying, you never knew that was going to happen, but this causality, this everything right. that meshed together is very similar and eerie in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? But how things happen in real life, you feel me? Like, let's take our, our, our board of directors for an example. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to put it in the same mishmash as Berserk, but we have situations where you know what I'm saying? We all got together for a certain reason. We all crossed paths, right? And then we all had a situation where we chose to either stay or not stay. Right. You right, feel what right. I mean? So in Costa's point, in Costa's point, she had a choice. But did she really have a choice when she really paid went and played back that little situation that she had? I'll tell you more about Gus later, because after he lost that battle with Griffin, he had a choice later, which I'm gonna go backwards. <laughs> after we finish talking about this shit to kind of ask that question as far as you know that's why I gotta love hate with that guy for for a hot minute but back to Costa um, she she was a very she was an enig- she was an emotional enigma that's 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 the way I could put it you know what I'm saying and I think as we go as we go deeper into the episodes we see her more and more you know what I'm saying break down the walls a little bit um, and it was just, it was just, you know, the ending was just so fucking sad, bro, because I felt like she had certain situations where she had a firm grasp on who she was and where she wanted to be, right, 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 and that right. was taken away by motherfucking Griffin, and that's how I feel about her, though. All right, bro, so um, my question to you is, can you blame her for always being mad and yelling at folks and being that, you know what I'm saying, emotional enigma, like, because she is the only woman, and being the only woman, you're going to get constantly tested over and over again, being on the battlefield, not only against your enemies, but even with your allies, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, she like she had to put on a whole nother sort of pers- persona to even mingle and do what she did as a mercenary, like so, can you blame her for that? For acting like that nah, bro? nah, I can't. Nah, true, I can't blame her at all, bro, because that she she was dealt with the hand she was dealt with, but she rised she rised upon those ranks based on her skill too. Like, I mean, it didn't take her overnight to be this kind of person, right? Like, she had to she had to earn her way because, like you said, she was the only woman. In that, in that, in that lane, and for her to fight through what she fought through, and for her to, you know, what I'm saying, rise upon the ranks, like she was really about her business, really. You know what I mean? Like she wanted to be that commander that was somebody like, you know, hey, let's do this, and, and she didn't take no shit from nobody at all. You feel what I mean? And I respect that. Like, you know, that that's why that's why I feel like her journey was so it was so understandable tragic, uh, relatable to how a lot of women in this day and age are dealing with working a, uh, amongst men in, in a world where it's so dominated by men. Like, who can be, who is going to appreciate that? And there was a cup, there was a scene, Troy, where, um, you know what I'm saying, like I said, we jumping all over the place, but forgive me when I say this. There was a scene where, uh, where Guts and Costa was in a situation and they had to hide in a little cave or whatever, and then they got out, or they was they was up in the situation and they was getting chased. And Guts ass was like, "Well, you know, are you still? Are you gonna be okay? Because you you smell like you're, you know, she was on her fucking period or something, right. something like that or whatever." And Guts was like, "You know what I'm saying? Basically, being a dumbass man. You know what I mean? Just being <laughs> real abrasive, not giving a fuck, like whatever, right? He was being, you know." 
what we what we used to call them in in, uh, in the fifties and beyond that, like male chauvinist or some shit like that or whatever. So you know, he felt like, man, you you hold me back. Like, what the fuck? You good? Like, you know what I mean? So. I mean, she was dealing with a lot of that because people would say that, and you heard that shit too, Troy. Like, you know, as she's a woman, she's a woman. It's a woman. She's a woman. This. She's a woman. That. Even when they first fought, even when Gus and Costa first fought, and he and, and Gus realized she was a woman, he was like, "Oh shit!" You know what I mean? Like his his vibe changed, obviously. But she she got dealt with a she got dealt with a heavy hand, man. Before Griffin and and. And definitely after that. Mhm, mhm. All right, all right, all right. So, so let's 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 move on to Griffin. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on to him, man. Like you know, I know me personally, man. Uh, when I first started watching Berserk, and when he hit the scene, and I was getting to know his character, I remember thinking to myself. This motherfucker seems too perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have a reason <laughs> not to like him at first. You know what I'm saying? But just off first viewing, you know, something was like, he just seemed too perfect. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, he got the white hair. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, he got the, the face for the women. Like, you know, like he got the charisma. He got the leadership. You know what I'm saying? You know, like he got the resources, the power. And I'm just like, you know... It's just something about him. I ain't have a reason yet, and I was waiting for that reason because the genius of the way Kentaro wrote this story is he basically told it in a backwards, forward sort of way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he gave us a mm -hmm. glimpse of what was to become way later in the story. So we know or first rip that Gus got a problem with Griffith, but we don't know why. We don't know right. why he's this motherfucker so much. And then we get the flashback, which is the whole show, basically, of why he hates this man. So when he hits the scene, I'm like, damn, you know, he seemed cool. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm like, he seemed cool. But, you know, it is some choices that he makes during his leadership that, you know made me like damn like this motherfucker will do whatever for his dream like you know what i'm saying like he is hell bent on that dream and then we got a whole nother thing to talk about with that necklace of his the uh bailey right. you know, like the right. bailey like the bailey plays a big part in him being so ambitious i feel like but you know him as a person man like like i said I felt like he just seemed too perfect. I just didn't have a reason not to dislike him like Gus did yet, you know. Like I, I look at I look at Griffin like this, man. I feel like he was the catalyst to a dream that Costa, Gut, and everybody else that was supporting him had no clue on. For this reason, we didn't wind up really finding out the really real until like later when his younger character got fleshed out and we were able to see and understand what the hell was going on but we had glimpses of that there was an episode forget which one i know it was in the early stages or whatnot where you mentioned that uh the bayless necklace right so they went in that cave or whatnot and they fought this this what was it, that tourist looking Stop. red dude, right? Or whatever, right? Stop. Yeah. So they was in that they was in that situation and that dude, which we never saw again, keep in mind. We never saw that dude again. Think about it. Think about it. He saw that necklace. He was whooping the shit out of both of them, right? He could have killed both of them. He saw that necklace. He said to himself or out loud. He said, no, he, he didn't say that. He said it out loud. He said some shit, and I'm paraphrasing, so forgive me. He said some shit where he's like, no, oh, he has a necklace. So basically right. what he said to Gus was, watch your back, bro. This is going to change <laughs> right. everything about that shit. That's and I'm paraphrasing, so like I said, bro, he, he said that. 
But you got to remember, Troy, that thing, and, and they were shocked, and Gus was hella shocked. Man, that's a monster. What the fuck is this, right? Like, what is this? Yeah. And that Yo. dude didn't tap out and leave until he saw that necklace. So it made me think, because you know what? That thing could have wiped the floor with Gus hey. and Griffin, period. Would have right. killed them both. But right. that thing decided not to and tapped out left. So it made me think, hmm, what is this? Is this a deeper necklace than the necklace? I mean, because when Griffin, you know, and they, and they were talking about it, and he was talking about the necklace or whatnot, it had them eyes and the eyes moving around and all that shit. And, you know, and Griffin got, Gus got scared, and he was like, well, you know, hey, it's crazy. It's freaky, huh? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. The necklace crazy, right? But we didn't see that we we didn't see that monster again, Troy. We didn't see that monster oh, for a reason. He actually, didn't drop that gem. Go ahead. All right, all right. So, actually, I believe we did see uh, Zod again, man. Um, let me see. Well, I don't remember the specific episode, but I know that it was a a, a fight. Uh, Gus was in or something, and that he had tossed him the sword. No, I mean, or from the mountain I, or something. I think like you're that. right. I think that was the end, though. I think that was towards the end, I believe. It was, yeah, right, I'm not right. Not 100%. Right, right, right. You know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know. Uh, but, 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 but Troy, think about it. How early on, how early on was that? And then even if we did, and I, and I think you're right, because I don't think we saw him, like, literally towards the end, but he didn't fight no damn monsters to the end, bro. Like, that that gym, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> Look, look, I'm going to put it like this. Griff, Griffin foretold a lot of shit. His background fleshed out a lot of, you know, understanding about what that necklace was and what he had to do. So in a lot of sense, Griffin does. I mean, he was motivated by something else. But, see, the thing that I got a, that I had a problem with him about was that, you know what I'm saying, we all knew, like, what was the mission, Troy? What was the mission? Like, you know what I'm saying, he got the Hawks together and, all this shit was for what? Like, what was it for? For peace, unity, tranquility? What's the end goal um, you talking about, right? Yeah, you know. Okay, yeah. Exactly. exactly. I mean, you know, uh, he's a real complex dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's very complex, man, because, you know, I know in the beginning, you know what I'm saying, like, they would portray him as someone who actually had a conscience and will feel a, a, a type of way about the people who died in battle because of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, he will have the moments where he'll reflect on them and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But to to further his dream, he'll do some some uh, weird boy shit and sleep with an old-ass man to get money. Yes. Yes. And then, during the battle... The uh the old man is like, you know what, hey, I told the people to spare your life and he didn't give a fuck. Griffin didn't give a fuck. He right, he right. in a lot of sense Troy, he in a lot of sense is off some Norse mythology because you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm gonna take it to I'm gonna take it to a different lane. So Griffin has that persona of a uh Asgardian like Loki, right? Cause those are some people who don't have a certain sexuality. You, so you don't know if they're going to be a man or a woman or if they like a man or a woman. They just get what they want when they want. And they are master manipulators at that as well. You know what I mean? So Griffin didn't, he didn't come to me, he didn't come off as someone who was homosexual or bisexual or nothing like that, right? It was mostly, all right. He, he's trying to figure out an angle so he can further uh, adapt his agenda to what's going on so he can be able to do what he needs to do. So that one cut scene when Costa was looking at him going into the room with the other dude and Costa knew that shit and then it didn't really it didn't really pop into my mind until like later during that battle where he was like well you know what I don't, I don't care about you anyway let's just use you basically mm -hmm. 
And and the old man was like, "What do you mean? Like he was kind of heartbroken, right. like way. You know what I mean?" Right. <laughs> and, and and he was like, and he was like, "Well, you know, I just told them to spare you and this, that, and the other." And he's like, "I don't give a fuck about you, bro. Like I just want you. I want your empire crumbled. I want it." So he took it. So Griffin, he, he may be complex, but again, it goes back to what I was saying. Not just fleshing out his young character, but as he got older, he literally, I felt like, he felt like, this is, you know what, I need to, I need this. So he did whatever he needed to do to get that. Not right. saying that that necklace did something for him, as far as enhancing whatever abilities that he had or whatnot, that, that's debatable. But, he, I guarantee, I promise you, his character was one where he predetermined a lot of shit because he uh, saw a, a further agenda. He saw a further agenda deeper than, you know what I'm saying, even his own imaginations at, this, at that particular time. Because think about it. When we, when we got to know a little bit more about Griffin and his character as he was younger, you also got a chance to see him as he got older. And then, you know, I'm not going to fast forward into like the latter part but there were certain instances where he didn't even know himself what that agenda meant anymore because as he got older, he started seeing certain things about how to, how things were flowing, gathering his of, army. But he, he didn't even know his end game. Am okay. I lying? Nah, nah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things started to get compromised, man. And um, I know... One of the biggest ones for him, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, we might as well just go ahead and jump into it, bro, is when um, him and Guts had that rematch. Right. Right. So, when him Guts and wound up winning. You know what I'm saying? Or he wound up winning, winning or pregnant from wrong. Yeah, Guts obviously won because he wound up leaving, which I have a problem with. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. So Gus wound up winning and leaving, right? Correct. Correct. So Gus leaves for a year. Yeah. What I don't get, because you, I mean, you know, and I, and I know I'm going back and forth with Gus, Griffin, Costa, all that, right? So Gus leaves, but prior to that, did he not say that, you know what, maybe, and he said it to himself, I don't know if he ever said it out loud, maybe this is what I, this is what I was supposed to be here for, I wanted, maybe I needed to be around somebody, or these people, or this family, or get this opportunity to be with who I wanted to be with, maybe this was supposed to be it for me, as far as where he wanted to be in his life, or his past, or whatever, maybe that was the chosen path. He said that before he fought Griffin and left for a year, right? Are you sure that it was prior to them fighting? Because I remember him saying that once he came back. And then he okay. realized because, you know, like, um, he wasn't around them for a year. So when he came back, I remember him saying that. But are you sure that he said that before? Sure, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I know you're absolutely right. He did say that he, he did say that later, but also I think as he got... Because remember, the time that he first fought Griffin, uh-huh. they fast-forwarded three years later, right? So he was already with the squad. He was already enamored with the group, and he was already playing his role, and he was already, you know, and, and you know, connected with a lot of people that was there. He was there three years. So I think somewhere in between that time, I could be wrong, Troy, that he basically thought to himself, he's like, well, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? And this was prior to. But I get it in life, right? You go through life, you feel like you outgrow a certain situation. You don't want to really cater to somebody else's dream, which is what Gus said. So basically, that's why he wanted out. I get it. Again, yeah, yeah, yo, and, and look, Gus, Gus is just as multi-layered as Griffith. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, I agree. Like, they, 
basically one and the same. Like, they like night and day or black and white. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they the same sort of shade, just in a different contrast. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because right. Gut, bro, like, bro, like, he questioned himself and his motives, his goals, his dreams, just as much as Griffith, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they do that shit <laughs> just like each other, like, you feel me? But the thing about Guts is, you know, he he always felt like he didn't need a squad. He always felt like he didn't need companions or comrades, you know what I'm saying? Like, because he basically been by itself since his birth, like, you know what I'm saying, far as, especially right. how far as he felt internally, you know what I'm saying, you know, like, nigga, uh, people came to him and tried to help him to a degree, but inside he always felt alone, like, you know what I'm saying, even when he was with the Hawks, and that's what ended up making him leave and, you know, try to, try to search for himself, like, you know what I'm saying, but now this poses the question of what do you think made him return? You know what I'm saying? Because if you leave for a year, then for that whole year, you probably was training and shit and searching for yourself, but you still think about the Hawks. Because if you wasn't thinking right. about them, what made you come back? Right, right, exactly, exactly. And that's the thing that I feel like never really got explained, right? Because he just came back and obviously, the squad was in chaos because Griffin was yeah, captured man, or whatnot. Griffin, yeah, that nigga Griffin. Yo, yo, look. So, Griffin, as you know, the whole public knows who are Berserk heads. Like, when Guts beats him in a rematch, you know, that was like a tower falling on him. You know what I mean? Like, that shattered his reality. Like, that that compromised his dream when Guts beat him and walked off like that without looking back. So, mm -hmm. there's this character named Charlotte, you know what I mean, who is the uh, princess of Midland, you know what I'm saying, who, right. who you know, Griffith has been uh, wooing and, you know, she is smitten over him, you know what I'm saying? Like, he'd be spitting that game to her. So this dude ends up <laughs> sneaking up in her spot and having sex with her, you know what I'm saying? Like, to right. now, now, now look, right? So we could r really chime on this a little later, but this is like a reoccurring theme for him with this sex shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he uses that as a sign of power or, you know what I'm saying, like, trying to dominate or whatever the case, like, why do you think he do that shit, bro, like, you know what I'm saying, like, like but, but, think, but think about it, think about it, Troy, think about this, you mentioned that, and it's not like he, like, is real abrasive with it, he just casually, like, you know, finesse it, right, he does it in a way where, you know what I mean, it's a, it's an end-all, be-all, a certain piece of a conversation, sexually that we need to have in order for me to further my agenda um throughout Basically. life that i know as far as you know some things that some people told me and some things that i try to gather up ain't that what the devil do the devil do that shit too though uh, the devil will sleep to you he will sleep next to you just so he can go ahead and further his agenda so you only have to mention nothing or talk about nothing else right like don't that happen that's what that's what quote unquote is out there like the devil will sleep next to you or sleep with you and you know what I mean like that's just a cliche but maybe it's true I'm you know thinking that? nah nah that's true man <laughs> damn okay yeah man so after he does this act you know what I'm saying you know he cannot get away like he's trapped you know what I'm saying so you know the next morning they they capture him, you know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? Like, the king is pissed. Like, he's pissed, man. Like, so, he like, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. Nigga, you mine. Nigga, I'm about to torture your ass. I'm about to make you feel it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, uh, Griffin didn't know whether he was going to survive that or not. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, far as 
far as being in that position and getting getting right. him jammed up like that, like that's a moment where you know you don't know whether you're gonna make, make it out of this. Like you know what I'm saying? Like real talk. And they yo they fucked him up good, bro. Like real talk. Like they fucked. Yes, they did. Up. They fucked him up. Like you know what I'm saying? Like but um. But my before, question, Troy, is this. My question to you is this thing. If he didn't know this was going to happen to him, and we're not going to fast forward, obviously, not right now at least. If he didn't know this was going to happen to him, why do you think things did progress the way they did? I feel like this, Troy, and you could disagree or agree or whatnot or make you think about it, but even his torture was written. Even the way that things went down the way it did was written to a point. You remember when that necklace got, you know, took it, taken off from him or whatnot, and it was just tossed somewhere, right? Fast forward it later, he does find it, or he does get a hold of it again. But this part of what happened to him and the fact that later, remember, he didn't know, or did he know, that Guts was going to return and come rescue him. Guts was already gone when he got taken, right? So right. D- did he know this was going to happen? Did he have to go through that torture in order for him later to get that semblance of dominance, that power, all that stuff that came from that later on, Right. Right? Think right, about it. Right, right, right. All right, all right. All right, look, right, so we going to dwell more, you know what I'm saying, into that question a little later, man, because um, that, you know, goes into the the uh, final act and shit. But I want to ask you about some of the supporting characters, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Judo, Pimpin', Corcus, and all, man, you know, like the squad, man, like the boys, you know. I know my, like, look, Personally, when I first started watching Berserk, I always related to Pippin. Like, I, I always related to him. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> uh, quiet, quiet giant. You know what I'm saying? Who get it popping? Like, you know what I'm real talk. I fuck with uh, Pippin, man. I know Corcus. You know, um, everybody give him uh, flack. You know what I'm saying? Because he always talks shit and all that. He real um, arrogant and always got to you, you know uh, say something slick, but I always give Corcus credit because he was actually the one to kick off the fight with Gus when they was young. When they yeah. first, yeah, each other. Like, he like him and his niggas was the one who set it off on Gus. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like you know, mm-hmm. so I fuck with Corcus, man. And uh, Judo, of course, you know he the smooth, smooth killer. You know what I mean? Someone who you go always <laughs> count on. You know what I mean? You always count on him. He always got some wise wise words to say, you know what I'm saying, and he's real loyal, you know what I'm saying, you know, I fuck with the whole squad, man, you know. I don't want to, I don't want to dig too deep, but you got to help me out with something, so, <laughs> there was a moment later, and, and I'm going to try not to say it without saying it, but you got to, you got to really help me with this one, so uh-huh. I got to get familiar with the cast, but, or, or the supporting cast, but the one, <laughs> the one towards the end, where the <laughs> when that nigga was like, he was like, he thought he saw breast before he died or some shit like that or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's my nigga right there. <laughs> That's my nigga right there. <laughs> That's my nigga right there. Like that whole, that whole, that dude right there is. I love that dude, man. I love that dude. Love that That's dude the, for himself. Uh, not me because he always talking shit. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Corcus. <laughs> Corcus is the guy. He is the guy. <laughs> now you mentioned Pip you mentioned Pippin, you know what I'm saying, quiet giant shit like that or whatnot. Like one one thing one thing that I love about Berserk, we not only got a chance to really get a lot of detailed stuff going on with, you know, the main three characters, Guts, Griffin, Costa. I mean, we got a chance to really tap into a little bit about that cast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Corcus, Pimpin, 
uh, what, what's his name, R- Rickard or Reich, Reichert? Oh, yeah. Reichert. Oh, 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 yeah. Hold on. How can I forget about Rickard, man? Yeah, you right. Yeah. Guys, look, it's Corcus, Pippen, Judo, and Rickard. There we go. Yeah, I forgot about Rickard, man. Damn, shout out to Rickard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Judo, Judo, again, I'm not trying to go too too forward um, into the final act, but um, – he was the he was the uh the the last rider die with Costa, right? You know right. what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was he was at one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was he was he was the truth, bro. Like that was man, my he guys, was the truth. Man. That was my guys, man. You know truth. what I'm saying? Like real talk, man, you know, they they always down the ride, like regardless. Like they always they, they what, always what, what, one thing Kentaro Miro did was not only give us a story, and he gave us a, a you know what I'm saying, the character development. Um, he gave us emotional attachments even to the supporting cast, right? That part, um, yes, yes. And I think that was a, you know, excellent, excellent uh, moment watching this entire, uh, these entire episodes based on the fact that I was literally having feelings about all these people, man. You know what I mean? So real talk, real talk. Yo, yo, look, listen. Um, If you watch the anime, it's 25 episodes, man. And um, in those 25 episodes, they do an excellent job of, like you say, Allowing you to get emotionally attached to the characters, getting the investment to the story, questioning and wondering how the shit going to play out towards the end, like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I feel like that whole predetermination thing that you're talking about is the main key factor in all of this, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. And um, I know my mans, you know, who had put me up on the show, he kept warning me, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, he kept warning me about the final act, you know what I'm saying? Like, he kept kept warning me about that. And I was like, man, like, you, you making this shit seem like it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I was sleeping on it, right? But if you pay mm-hmm. attention to the first episode, in the first episode, you notice when Guts is sitting up under the tree in his nighttime and the ghost and the demons start fucking with him and shit, he got this symbol on his neck that's glowing. Yep. Bleeding. Yep. And you see all this shit around him, and then you see silhouettes of these figures, and you don't know who these figures are, and mm-hmm. like four of them, five of them, and you're like, what the hell going on? Like, it's a whole little thing, right? So now it's easy. It's real easy to forget about that while you're watching the flashback in these episodes and you're seeing the right. story, like, you're seeing how things play it out. It's easy to forget about all of that, right? But it comes back full circle, man, towards the uh, final act, man, which we might as well go ahead and jump into, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, um... Yep. So they rescue Griffin. They rescue him and he's battered. He's you know, beat down. He is decrepit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's all of that. Like, his tongue is fucked. It's all snatched out. His goddamn tendons is cut. You know what I'm saying? He's skinny as all hell. He's beat up, man. Cut up. You know what I'm saying? I even heard in the main... Never able to walk again. Never, never able, able to, to walk again. again. I know in the manga, you know, certain people say that they cut, you know, they cut his manhood off. Like, real tall. Like, they fucked mm. him up. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and his face, his face, yo, real talk, we don't even see his face. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's so... Nah. Listen, he's so decrepit. Guts kept the damn helmet on. He like, yo, this shit is bad. I don't even want the soldiers seeing this. Like, we got to cover you up, yeah. bro. Real talk. Yeah. So, obviously, this, you know, gets the whole band of the Hawks, like, Solemn, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just fucked up over this shit. Like, they don't know what to do now because they didn't know that he was in this state, you know what I'm saying? So now, not only do you got Griffith and Guts 
questioning their dreams and their motives. Now the whole band of the Hulk questioning they they mere existence now because they whole motive was behind this man. Now this man could barely, you know what I'm saying? Like he's a shell of a man now. You feel me? So, you know. So again, uh, Troy, it goes back to what I was saying. They're starting to question what the mission is because of one man. One man in his journey inspired or coerced or manipulated, whatever you want to call it, his mission and today's mission. And that's where the flaw I felt like was when it came to just trying to figure out what it is that they're fighting for at the end of the day, right? Because then they started asking questions. But also, this time around, correct me if I'm wrong, Troy, but there was a moment in time where Tosca and Guts was talking literally with Griffin and Earshot. Well, I'm going to leave. You know what I mean? I'm going to leave, and you know what? Yeah. Some of the other people later were like, yo, I'm going to go with you. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, um, one, oh, of the, oh, one of the supporting characters, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. All right, uh, Brian, all right, so before we really get deeper to the final way, let's, let's fast forward, I mean, not fast forward, let's rewind just a little bit. Um. Mm-hmm. So, guts and Kafka mate. You know what I'm saying? Like they. I was gonna. I was just gonna mention that too. I was just gonna mention it. Right. You know what I'm saying? That like, was when. That was when he returned after a year hiatus and shit like that or whatever. Right. right. So, or was that somewhere in? The, was that before? I forget. No, nah, no. Nah, you right. You right. You right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That, that, that's after he returned, and um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um. I, on first viewing, I had an idea that they could make, but at the same strength, both of their characters are so strong, I could also see the possibility of that not happening. You know what I'm right. saying? So right. it's like, if they do, that'd be cool. If they don't, I could still see that happening. So when it did end up happening, in the way it happened, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was real powerful, man, because Kafka, she was going through a gambit of emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I personally feel like her pointing the finger at Guts for what happened to Griffith wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not Guts. Right. That happened, man. But, you know, she just needed somewhere to direct her anger. And, um, you know, she was overwhelmed because for that year, she's in charge now. She's the new leader. She's the yep. one that people ask for orders and they take commands from, like, you know what I mean? She's that one, you feel me? And that's a lot for her to deal with, like, you know what I'm saying? And because you got to think, two men, for that whole year, two men that she admired the most are gone. Right. Both. I mean, so she got to uh, lean on herself for, for everything to guide an army. So by the time Guts came back, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, that released it. That released it all. You know what I mean? That's so, why, that's why, that's right? why I actually, so the and Troy, there was layers that I felt like personally you know what that I mean? Guts, there was layers that I felt like you you still got me, right? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Yeah. The, there was layers that I feel like Casca and Guts were probably going to wind up together in, in one way, shape, or form for this reason. It was too much, I don't want to say sexual tension, but there was too much friction between them for them not to explore something between them for years. Think about it. You know what I mean? Not just from the very beginning, how they met. They fought when they first met. You know what I mean? And when they fought, you know, I think Guts was kind of, you know, he was kind of taken aback by her being a woman. But I think partly, I think he was a lot, he was admiring her too, as far as for her combat skills and all this shit, right? So, you know, fast forward that, after he loses to Griffin three years later, 
they get a chance to be around each other. And even though they're, you know, friction, they don't like each other, they like each other, they don't like each other, they wind up caring about each other. So to your point, Troy, he he being guts, when he left, yeah, Costa was taking, because Costa wound up caring about that dude. Like, he legit gave a damn about him. Right. So I think if if anything, you know what I'm saying, you started seeing little pieces about, you know, Costa's uh, wall being chipped away by Guts being an abrasive asshole. And I'm not saying that she was turned on by that, but she was in a sense like, all right, well, you know, I I just so happen to care about this asshole. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like she was on that hype for, for a while. So then when he comes back after a year, yes, she's pissed. You know what I'm saying? Lashed out at him, everything. Um, and they get into an emotional situation, and not just sexually, but I think they connected. But he was still an asshole, and I think she knew that. And I think she was okay with that, and I think he was okay with that. There was plenty of times during combat scenes where he would be a little bit more protective of her. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm saying, to a degree. But she's like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in this. Fuck you. I'm gonna still do this. You feel, you feel what I'm saying? So I think in a lot of ways, like, you know, we got a chance to see something develop over time, and then we'll talk about the rest later. All right, all right, all right, all right. But, but I know guts ass though, man. Like, he fell in love with that woman, man. Like, real talk, he fell in love with her. So much so to the point where he was like, listen, when I leave, I'm taking you with me type shit. Like, you, like you coming with me, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's what Griffith ended up overhearing. That's what he yep. ended up disliking, you know what I'm saying? And um, so much so to the point where when Costco was trying to wrap his... Uh, bandages like he like he just hopped on her like real talk like you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. nigga, he just jumped on her bro I'm like damn I didn't even know you had the strength to do that nigga like right shit, like w- like what does this mean basically like you feel me like I know when I first saw it I'm like what is he trying to do like like why are you on top of this woman man like but maybe that was some foreshadowing shit maybe that exactly. was some foreshadowing shit you know what I'm saying but um so the man Griffith, you know, he ends up somehow rallying up, you know what I'm saying, you know, like the horse carriage and shit. He gets that shit going, shocking the hell out of Guts and Casca, you know what I'm saying, and, um, and the rest of the Hawks are on the way, you know what I mean, for, uh, for backup and all that. So they chasing him down, but he, but, you know, um, he had a head start. And, yo, and, and, and something else that I kind of, like, bro, like, it's a love-hate thing with him, too. But even in that state, like, he was having visions of himself. Like, nigga, what are you doing in this yep. state? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> make, my yep. nigga, like, listen, we got a a, a castle, of a, a damn kingdom to get to. Like, bro, like, we still got dreams mm-hmm. out here. Get up. I think that's what... Parked it alongside the Guts and Costco thing. He was like, yo, it's not over yet. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, now the horse carriage ends up, you know, hitting the rock and falling, and he ends up to flying right into the damn water. You know what I'm saying? Breaking his arm and shit. Like, you know, he all fucked up, bro. Like, and lo and behold, you, what does this man see, Brand? <laughs> What the motherfucking mean? necklace, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, now, boom, right? So, let me break down the Baylor to you a little bit, right? So, um, the Baylor is like, it's like a, um, how can I say? It's like something, you know, that you summon. Like, okay, it's an item that you summon. You know what I'm saying? But not everybody gets one. Especially the Crimson right. Baylor that Griffith has. The Crimson right. Baylor 
something, you know, uh, special, you know what I'm saying? But people can have standard, regular Baylit that's like gray and stuff like that, but it serves the same function, you know what I'm saying? Like to summon the God hand and shit, right? So when you summon the God hand with a regular Baylit, you know, uh, you could sacrifice something small, you know what I'm saying? And then get turned to what they call an apostle or a demon or whatever. Now the Crimson Baylit is a Baylit to whereas you could become one of us type shit. Right. You, know you could become, become a God Hand member. And that's why God was so damn taken aback when he saw Griffith with that shit. He was like, yo, this nigga got this shit. He was like, yo, if you see this man as your brother, man, you better boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, he gave him that jewel. But, um, right. You know, uh, so yeah, he, he comes across the Baylor, right? And even he's shot. But even prior to him coming across the Baylor, he was so goddamn um, messed up in the head and so hopeless, he tried to commit suicide. Yep. He tried to commit suicide. And I feel like the blood leaking from his neck helped to activate that baby. Maybe nah. that's, ah. just my own, ah. that's just my own theory. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Ah. But, you know, I know when Guts and them was on the way, next thing you know, you got a solar eclipse coming. And then what else you see in the background? Ah. In the background behind a nigga, uh, Griffith, a whole bunch of zombies and demons and shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was your reaction? Okay, I need to think about that it thing? that way, though. Okay. Okay. Because, Real you know what, man. Troy? I think you're right. Something had to act, have activated it, but, it, but also, I mean, call it what you want, divine intervention. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, his 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 moment when he took that horse carriage, took it over there, had it slip out, fall into it, break his arm, fuck himself up even more for him to actually get it, find it. He had to have happened. Uh, he had to have had a traumatic moment that made him realize or made him summon summon the necklace or do you think it was something else um I, <laughs> me me knowing berserk like how i know it bro it was all causality <laughs> it was all okay. causality predetermination just like you said bro um now it begs the question though if griffith knew exactly what would have happened because mind you even when he was you know what i'm saying getting tortured in the dungeon he was still having visions of these god hand members saying oh you know are we gonna meet you soon and shit like that or whatever like no nah, i mean you know like he was seeing shit right. in the dungeon like you know what i mean right. so you know um i don't know bro maybe he didn't know maybe he didn't but all I do know is that when Guts was on the way to check him, Griffith was like, nigga, don't come near me, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, was, yeah. Like, like, he was spooked, bro. Like, he was like, don't come near me, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, what he say, what he say, if you touch me, yeah, it, that's it. Bro. That's a wrap. So much it touched my shoulder, you and I will never... Be. You and I will, will never be. And he never finished that sentence. And people like to fill in the blank, you know what I'm saying, with their own theories of what he probably meant in that uh, in that moment. But he never completed want, the sentence. You want to know what I was thinking? What's that? You know what I was thinking? I was thinking at that time, right? I'm thinking, this nigga Griffin is the devil, right? <laughs> nigga is the devil. Something about that dude. I know a lot of people out there in anime world or manga world is, is you know, enamored by Griffin, right? I think he's a motherfucking devil, personally. I agree. So here's, here's the thing. With all this shit, everything that was going on, 
Gr- Griffin could not let or did not want Guts to touch him because I feel like Griffin wanted him as the underboss, the devil capo, right? I don't know what you call that, that second in command devil person or whatever, but I think he wanted him as his second guy as all this shit is going on. So that's why I don't do this because if you interfere now, I can't handpick you like right. I wanted to from the very beginning. You uh, feel me? So I think he wanted something more from gut. But if he interfered, if he would have stepped back while he went through this transformation, this journey, this, that, and the other, he would have came seeking him like, quote, unquote, he did in the very beginning. Think about it, though. Was it, they didn't, Guts didn't go seeking Griffin. Griffin found him, ran into him, quote, unquote, challenged him, beat him, and then all this shit led to this. You don't think he was going to do that again? Search him out, seek him out, have him as his capo, right? Like, that's what I was thinking. That, that was my thoughts. I mean, bro, like, you know, it, listen, it ain't nothing wrong with that theory, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Like, you could be right. Who who knows, bro? You know what I'm saying? Because I know um, in that year that Gus was gone and, Griffith was being tortured. It's like nobody knew what was going to happen. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Nobody knew what was going to happen because you notice when Griffith first saw Guts in that chamber, what did he do? He he picked his little crippled hand up and tried to put his shit around Guts' neck. Yep. Yep. Why? Like, yep. why are you trying to choke this nigga? You ain't even got the strength for that shit. Like, why are you trying to <laughs> Right, that? right. <laughs> right. But you know what? He could have been in that stage or the moment that he was feeling because he ain't seen the nigga in a year, right? So he was like, you know what? My agenda could have been further along if your motherfucking ass would have stayed. If you would have stayed and you weren't <laughs> gone for that long time, then I wouldn't have to figure out or go through this shit that I'm going through now to gain this power if you tapped, if you if you would have still been here. If you would have still, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, Troy. Griffin had an agenda. There's other people that started to wane off that agenda because they had their own ideas and stuff like that. But Guts already had that anyway before he connected with them. He already had, he was a loner. He was a man on this mission, this, that, and the other. So, again, it served a purpose, but. I don't think Griffin thought it through, but then I feel like he still predetermined a lot of shit based on, like, all right, well, if plan A didn't work, let me do plan B, based on other people's emotions and reactions, right? So that's how I took it. Yeah, true, true. You know what I'm saying? But then also it goes back to the theme of causality because what's the odds of this Baylor just swimming in the damn water like that? That part. Like, what's the that odds part. of that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, listen, he, yo, that shit got cut off his neck at the beginning of his torture. Not towards yep. the middle or the end. Like, in the beginning, yep. he lost that shit. So yep. a whole year and some change later, it just so happened to be swimming in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, that shit was meant, you know? But, um, so, so yeah. Causality, bro. Right, Causality. right. Right. So, what was your reaction when you saw them get transported to a whole other dimension like that? Uh, I started thinking at first, this is what, uh, what was his name, Zod, right? This is what Zod was saying, everything. This is what he was saying. This is, this is what would have took place. And I think Zod, for the most part, bro, was – really relaying that to guts, right? It wasn't really about Griffin anymore. It was about, like, bruh, watch this dude. Because not only does he have that necklace, he didn't have, and then we find out, you know, obviously later throughout the episodes that, you know what I'm saying, this was always a connection that he had as a young dude, right? So I was like, fuck, this is about to go down. Like, 
But see, here's the thing that I started thinking about, too. I'm like, fuck, everybody's going to die. That's the way I started looking at it off top, though. I didn't think nobody was going to survive this shit. Because Ooh. once once this shit went down, then it was really no turning back because he didn't, he being Griffin, didn't even know how this outcome was going to unfold. He just knew that he had to get to a certain place or a certain stage in his agenda. And then he didn't know how that, how that end game was going to look like or what that end game was going to transform into. So when I saw that, I saw the end, bro. I saw everybody dying. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, man. You know, as the berserk world know, we are officially tapping in and talking about. You know what I'm saying? The final actual berserk, man. The eclipse. The the the, the infamous eclipse, man. And um. So, as soon as they get there, bro, like, you know, eventually the Godhand members summon themselves. And the four Godhand members who we are introduced to is a woman named Slan. Slan is the woman. The the dude with the glasses who floats, his name is uh, Ubik. And the other one is mm-hmm. Conrad, and the one with the big brain head is called Void, right? And um, okay, every single God Hand member was once a human with power, sort of like Griffith, you know what I'm saying, who went through similar things and got to a point where they had a downfall. And mind you, they, they, they all had that Crimson Veilet, and um, they, right. they, they ended up going through a downfall and tortured and they get to a point where their Crimson Bela gets activated and they are presented with the current God Hand members because the God Hand members tend to change every however centuries or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But they all go through cycles and they change members or whatever, right? So mm-hmm. every single God Hand member that we see, they all went through that process of what, Griffith is about to go through, you know what I'm saying? And right. um you know, they they reign over the common demons, the common apostles and stuff. And this ceremony known as the eclipse happens every two hundred and sixteen years, you know what I'm saying? So every two hundred and sixteen years matter of fact, oh that's the time frame probably, you know what I'm saying? You know, like a new God hand member comes you feel me but um yeah so now with now it is griffith's time man and one thing that i truly admired bro when they first got there is how strong kafka was how yo how brave was that bro like you know what I'm saying you know like taking a stand like that man hey man i feel like i feel like all days all days aside again kafka was one even though she was a troubled enigma, her strength, her courage, understanding her backstory and her front story made me root for her, bro. Like, um, she was the one, you know, as angry as she was, it, she was probably, you know, obviously high up there in my most relatable, um, especially being the only really strong woman present during this journey, um, she battled her ass off, bro. Like, that yeah, man. was, man, man. Yeah, man, yeah, man. And, yo, yo, and, um, gotta give it up to Gus, man, because when the God Hand members came and they started, you know, breaking things down to them, letting them know why they was here and what they gonna be for like Gus was like man if you don't shut up like like yeah. you know, with y'all like man, you got me fucked up like that's basically what Gus was saying was you got me fucked up like you know what I mean like nah yeah. like, this is happening like you know what I'm saying but they was on some shit like yo it's up to him you know what I'm saying like nigga right God, like y'all here to be fooled basically like it's it's up to him and truthfully bro like to me this this 
realm that they got transported to, it brought me in the mind of a level in Dante's Inferno Hell. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. Because it's hey, 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 okay, okay, I see this, I see this. I mean, it. because in Dante's Inferno, you know, it's ah. just a So, I'm like, yo, where, wherever they at, they definitely in a level of hell, that's for sure. You know? Right, right, right. And, and truth be told with Guts, because um, you mentioned it, and, and I, feel like, I feel like I failed to mention it, you know, throughout his arc and his journey. Um, he's the same nigga that killed 100 dudes. He's the same dude right. who, who hands down, you know what I'm saying, took out so many different people throughout this arc, right? So come to here, you know what I'm saying? Even though in my mindset, I'm thinking, man, everybody gonna die, but... Everybody gonna die fighting though, right? Like things are obviously changed because of where they got hit up with, transported to, or whatnot. So things are different. They're fighting massive demons, not just another oh. empire that's about to crumble, right? So things are Yo, different. Oh, oh, big difference. Big difference. And not only do you got those shits around, but they. They intimidating this fuck, nigga. They drooling at the mouth, nigga. They start changing forms. Yes. And they talking yes. shit. Like, bro, like, nigga. Bro, like, that shit was spooky, man. And, um... So, you know, the God Hand members, they begin to basically, um... You know... And influence him to cross over. Like, they, like they end up... Showing him his his past, his his uh, endeavors, his his childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like they just enticing him to make this sacrifice, man, so he could become one of them, get a whole new body. You know what I'm saying? And they and they're they're making the real like yo, truthfully, bro. Like that's why I say like the genius of of Kentaro, man, because. They making a good point, kind of in a sense. Even though you selling your soul, or you, you know what I mean by like you going over to the devil side, man. But it's like, bro, you already been piling bodies, like. So they making it seem like, nigga, yep. you already been piling bodies. What's this yep. other two hundred, three hundred, four hundred more bodies? Like, damn, nigga, like you've been doing yep. this your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and listen, maybe that was part of it too. Maybe that was part of Griffin's mission was to create this army, was to go go all in and slaughter hell of people and make sure that he had his minions when he went to that other side too. Think about it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. So, you know, they they making it seem like, bro, like this is nothing compared to the mountain of bodies you already got. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a few 400, 500 more corpses is nothing, like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, as as this is happening, Guts is bravely, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's climbing a damn mountain of faces with a damn dagger, you know what I'm saying? With a fucking <laughs> dagger, climbing the shit, trying to get to Griffith, right? And, um, you know, eventually, you know, Guts gets up there, man, and by the time he gets up there, you know, Griffin turns around, sees him, and that was the last nail in the coffin. Like, that was the last straw that had him go over the edge because he was like, bro, like, in that moment, we, like, it became full circle of the effect Guts had on Griffin. In that moment, he was like, yo, you the only one that obstructed the dream I had, like, you, nigga. Out of all the tens of thousands of enemies, and, nigga, you was that one, bro. And he was like, I submit. You know what I mean? I think I think I, there was a stretch or a point in time where I feel like, um, especially when all this shit happened, got transported to hell, you know, in my opinion, that was hell. Um, all that shit was going on the way it went down. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the route that Griffin saw or envisioned his rise to this kind of power. Gus was always a means to an end, 
but also a thorn in his side later on because, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Gus started having different agendas. He kind of already, he always had an agenda. He didn't want to, he didn't want to have to live somebody else's dream, right? So, again, that's a good metaphor for real life shit. You know what I mean? A lot of people look at different things in life and like, you know what? Hey, if it's, if my dream isn't attached to this dream, then why am I living yours? Right, right. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people look at certain things that way and they're like, yo, that's what Guts did. Guts, that's why he was out and he was about to be out. Look, I found Griffin. He's fucked up now, but at the same time, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go pursue my shit. So, yeah, it was a thorn in his side. It was a problem. But at the same time, I feel like, all right, you know what? We're going to take this nigga out now because he already fucked up my whole mission. He being Griffin, right. you know, right. my whole mission as far as why I want to get here with me. I still feel like this, Troy. I feel like he wanted Guts to be his second in command in hell. He wanted to be that devil devil, and he wanted that second guy to be Guts. I still feel like that. Think so? Mm, okay. Okay. I think okay. so because he sought him out. He sought him out. I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, Griffin was one where he already knew he could foretell a lot of his shit, but he wanted somebody with guts, his drive, determination, um, his rage in a lot of sense, and his passion to be where he wanted to be. That's why you saw a lot of manipulation mixed in these episodes, a lot of, you know, what it stood for, what did he want at the end of the day. So I kind of saw it at that uh, you know what I'm saying? As we peel back layers and think about this shit, especially that final act. So, but right, it didn't so, happen that way, and it was just all fucked up. So, you know, that's how I thought. All right, bet, bet. So, um, I'm gonna counter that right and say, um, but what do you think at that point in the story? You know, uh, he strictly sees guts as the ops. You know what I'm saying? Because, boom, you defeat me in the fight. You completely crush my damn pride. And I'm into the point where I'm tortured for a year. When I see you again, I'm trying to choke your ass and shit, right? And not, and, <laughs> and not only that, not only that, but you and Costco got something going on. I'm listening to y'all. Even though I never wanted to touch Costco when she was all over me, but now I'm jealous because you got it, right? And to put the icing on the cake, since I'm fucked up, nigga, my soldiers looking at you that, as the leader, nigga. They came to guts. Mm -hmm. like, yo, oh, nigga, we, we gonna follow you. The band of the Hulk said that. They was like, yo, don't, don't leave us again. So at that point, nigga, Gus basically took Griffin's whole life. That's why I feel like that counter with this counter, that's why as Gus, you know, during that point in hell where he was like, don't touch me, don't touch my shoulder, because if you do, it's done. We're done. Like, I can't, I can't change what's about to happen. So he already knew something was about to go down anyways. And yes, they had that one year hiatus where he was gone. Dream shatter, all that shit. But I still feel like if Griffin would have got out of this and he would have came to power, he would have still sought out Guts in some way, shape, or form or whatnot and not the other way around. Because while all this shit was happening in that final arc, that whole, it, it meant something to me when he kept saying, don't touch my shoulder. Don't do right, it. Because right. if he yeah. did, because if he didn't do it, I think things would have been different. Maybe. I don't know. Things would have right, been right. different if that that didn't go down the way it did. You feel me? So it's a lot of layers to this, bro. And that's what makes it intriguing to come with these conclusions and to see like or to think about what could have been or what should have been or whatnot. But I just feel like even though with all that shit. He could have still had, he being um, Guts could have still had an opportunity, well, Griffin could have took Guts as a second in command or whatever the hell he had planned for him, big picture, because we saw we saw layers of that after he won the first battle, if we want to rewind it. He put him high up in the ranks, right? That's, that was that was foretelling something, bro. 
Ah, okay, okay, okay. Hey, look, listen. I like that theory, man. I like that theory, man. So, um, boom. All right. So now, prior to you know us talking about the the band and the whole getting the brand and sacrifice and all that. So while so while all of this is happening in hell, right? There's a whirlwind, a tornado outside where they originally got transported at, right? So now what's, mm-hmm. what's happening is Zod is fighting the infamous Skull Knight. Now, now let's talk about the Skull Knight for a quick little minute. Right now, the Skull Knight, he was omitted from the anime, off rip. Why? I don't right. know why. The budget reason or something like that, but he was omitted. He's in the Berserk movies, and he's in the manga, right? Now, right. in the manga, Guts first met the Skull Knight during his first voyage leaving the Hawks. He met him during that time period, and Skull Knight gave him a warning, right? Now, they reenacted that scene in the movie after him and Casca made it, you know what I mean? But, you know, he still... Mm-hmm. That's the same message, like, yo, listen, like, a rain of blood gonna fall upon you, something you ain't never seen, but contend, struggle, because you're going against fate, you know what I mean? Like, he gave him the same right. sort of, that Zod did, you know what I'm saying? And, um, it's a lot of mystery behind the Skull Knight and his motives, and why he does things, but, um, for the most part, the theory that's out there is, he represents a character similar to Guts. So the Skull Knight went through things similar to what Guts went through. You know what I'm saying? But the Skull Knight's fate is something that Guts is trying to not fall under, so to speak. You know, like he's trying to go a different route than what the Skull Knight is at right now. But the Skull Knight, you know, he's a you know a, a very prominent character, man. And also, Brand. I know you remember that that episode. I believe it's episode twenty-two, man. When one faction of the Hawks, because the Hawks got split up, right? Because one section was gonna go find Griffith, and the other one stayed behind. Yep. yep. Wait for their return, right? So now yes, Richard sir. was part of that squad, and then it was a scene where they got attacked by the Apostles, man. They got they um. Uh, they got attacked, man, by um, these apostles called the Slug Count and Rosine. Rosine is that fairy-looking demon. Now, I mean, yep, and, the yep. count, and the Slug Count is the one with the big teeth that, that had the man hanging upside down. Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, now, now, in the anime, they didn't show what happened to Ricker in that scene. But in the manga... What saved Ricket life was the Skull Knight. The Skull Knight came and basically told them niggas to get the fuck out of here. Like, nigga, leave, leave him alone. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, okay. that's what saved Ricket life. You know what I'm saying? And, um, so, yeah, the Skull Knight and Zod is fighting outside the whirlwind where this eclipse is happening. And it's theories out there, but in my opinion, Zod was there protecting the tornado and i mean you know like uh, he was there guarding the gate basically that's my opinion you know what i'm saying like okay and the what, what led what do you think what do you think was the i mean obviously the the catalyst to you know how you know all the monsters and demons started you know what i mean like i, I think we all know that you know how things went down when it came to you know now it was time for these but these monsters just start feeding on, on, on the hawks and everybody else that was around or whatever, right? So um, when, you, when you think about that moment, like that moment where you kind of – did you feel like everything was about to end when they literally started feasting on, on, on every single hawk army? Right, 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 right. Man, um, bro. I remember watching that shit for the first time, and um, I don't think my eyes left the screen one second. I know my mouth was open, you know what I'm saying? I just couldn't believe what I was seeing, man, because at that point in time, I never 
seen something so graphic in anime. That was the first time that had me like, yo, like, this shit is fucked up. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't know how to process it, bro. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, that shit really kind of, like, traumatized me in a way, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Especially once I start seeing my niggas go. Once I start seeing yeah. my niggas go, like, pimping in them. Like, once I start seeing my, yo, and Shout out to Pimpin, man, because he fucking saved Casca life in that moment, bro. Like, he, he stepped sure up. Did. Man, like, real tall. He stepped up, bro. Like, but once I start seeing them go, like, that's what, bro, like, oh, my God, my nigga. Like, that shit fucked me up bad, bro. Like, I ain't going to lie to you. And, um, Yeah, man, you know, that shit just fucked me up, bro. Like, I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like the way Pimpin went down. Corkish, you know, I um, I ain't want to see none of them go, but you know, because look, like they they deserve that shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, nah. And nah. they and they reactions is real life reactions. Like Corkish snapped, he snapped, like he lost his mind, bro. Hey, Corkish, you know Corkish was a non-believer. He didn't believe none of this shit was going on, bro. Like he that was it, but. Let me tell you, Corkis is a lot of, okay, so I ain't going to try to hit it too much over the head, but, you know, Corkis did, you know, he kept saying, nah, this ain't real, this ain't real, right? He was yeah. saying that shit. Because all right, so. <laughs> it's a dream. <laughs> all right, so, you know, here we are, the Hawks, as a, you know, as a squad, right? They have a whole group, and you got a mix of different people that believe in certain things, right? You know, not everybody, and again, I'm, I ain't trying to hit too many people over the head with some deep shit, but not everybody is in full belief of whatever it is you want to believe in, right? I feel like Corcus, even though he was a he was a non believer, he's kinda of like the atheist, right? I don't believe yeah. in this shit. You feel what I mean? Like, this can't be real. None of this is real. You know what I mean? Like no no matter what you see with your eyes and what you hear with your this ears, really right. I don't believe <laughs> none of it. None of it at all. So he symbolized what I feel like an atheist is when they look at certain things. You know what I mean? The Big Bang Theory, you know, God, spirit, you know what I'm saying, heaven, hell, whatever you want to call it. So this nigga in hell not believing it. If you would have put that man in heaven, he probably wouldn't have believed that either. You know what I mean? So he's kind of like one of those dudes where he didn't believe none of it. He just, he just whatever, it was what it was to the end. And like I said, he was hallucinating or whatever else. But, but he wasn't hallucinating monsters or none of that. He loved women. He loved breasts. He loved how it looked. He did. He saw what he wanted to see before he died. And I'm just, I just took that as a metaphor type of thing where it's just like in every group, not saying all groups, every group, there's always going to be somebody who don't believe in something. Period. No matter what you do, no matter what agenda you have, no matter what's what, there is going to be something or somebody like that in life. And that's not a bad thing. It's just fact. It's human nature. It's how it is. And I just looked at him that way as he met his end. But to your point, everybody else, Pippin and them, listen, it, it hurt my heart in a lot of ways, bro, because I got a chance to you know what I'm saying? As far as supporting characters go, and I and I'll put this on everything, Troy, like these twenty five episodes plus the one movie joint, uh I I've had an attachment to the supporting cast that I've ever had in life with any supporting cast of any movie, any anime, any cartoon that I've ever seen ever. Ever. Man, real talk, Bram. I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to tell you. Man. Yo, and then, look, listen, and then my man Judo, man, my man Judo, he's that last line of defense trying to save Costco, man. And they ride on to the, the horse. end. Yeah, look, look, nigga, the damn horse got, got eaten up, bro. The fucking horse yep. got eaten up, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And, he's, and he's protecting her, man, from the attacks of this apostle, bro. Ends up getting stabbed through the chest and the heart, man, and fucking, bro, like, his, you listen, his his last moments, and, bro, like, this is so relatable on a guy level. 
on a man level, it's so relatable to have feelings for a woman and not tell her, bro. Like, every yep. man doesn't have yep. that moment. I don't care who you are. Every man listening, I guarantee it's a woman who you liked before, who you possibly loved before and never told her, bro. That's right. And, and, That's right. And you go to the grave with that shit. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yo, listen, that was that was powerful, bro, because in that moment when I first saw that, bro, like, I had like a, oh, yeah, of course he likes her moment. Even though I never thought about that during the anime, but sometimes I was like, yo, like, Judo was always overprotective kind of Casca too in a way, like, you know what I mean? But you never really overthought it, but you noticed it how J- Judo would have Casca back. Like, you know what I'm saying? And let me add on to this, Troy. And earlier episodes dictated. Remember, Judo told Guts to take her with you, bro. Take her. You know what I mean? He said that, right? So he said that knowing that he had these feelings for her, but he knew that she was happiest somewhere else and not, you know, obviously with him or whatnot. So that got me to start thinking. But then at the same time he was he was loyal and down to the end. He was he was a soldier, like in in in, in all transparency ever, bro. Like he was there until he couldn't be there no more. And what's sad though, he did take that to his grave because it was in his thoughts he was thinking, like, yo, thinking I can that. love this woman. That, you know what man. I mean? He was thinking that, man, and um Yeah, man, so you know he he passes away, man, and um, and now this, bro, like this is the moment where because I already had dread, but this is the moment where I really was like having sorrow, man. Kafka ends up getting surrounded by the apostles, man, and I felt like I was there with her. You know what I'm saying? Like on first view, I felt like I was there with her, man. Like I. I felt her, her frightened. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like I felt the trepidation. Like you know what I'm saying? I felt all of that for her, bro. Like, cause it's nothing she could do. Like you know what I'm saying? Like she tried to fight the damn sword gets broke. Like you know what I mean? It's like, bro, she don't mm-hmm. got no fight in her. She's it's like she's scared to death, rightfully so. You feel me? Right. And then next thing you know, the demons hem her up. Right? They hem her up and will. We don't see it for a couple minutes. Cut the guts. This motherfucker. This motherfucker. Guts. Guts is doing the impossible. Guts is doing the impossible. This motherfucker don't even got a sword, brand. Like, yo, bro, like who, like who in that moment in hell fighting demons thinks to, oh, okay, I don't got a sword. Let me cut off a demon horn and use that shit as a weapon, like. Who thinks of that, bro? Only niggas like that's Guts. why I got so much huh. love for Guts and so much hate for him at the same time. But go ahead, continue, bro. I, 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 I yo, bro, cause I still want you to ex- explain that part to me. But yeah, man. So um, you know, Guts is making a way. You know, what I'm saying to survive, right? So now, um, boom. So we cut the Griffin. Now. In the anime, they, you know, had his subconscious speaking about how, you know, he was weighed down by the bodies and he don't feel nothing and shit like that. You know, he was going through his metamorphosis, right? So now, um, Mm -hmm. in the manga, you know, it's similar, but it goes more in depth. Now, the God Hand members, they actually work for or worship, so to speak, what is called the idea of evil right and the idea of evil is like their dark god or whatever and that's basically like the collective unconscious of darkness right so that's where Griffith goes to go through his transformation he goes to meet the idea of evil and he basically like yo you know I want wings and I want this I want that like you know what I mean like as this eclipse thing so um Boom, we skip back to Guts, right? So now he's, nigga, like he's in a pool of blood of all the brand. 
a pool of blood of his comrades, his comrades' body parts and shit. How traumatizing is that, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come hey, on. Exactly. The fact that, you know, the family that he, you know, and, and see, that's why I struggle with, with who he is because you see, I mean, layered with so much, you know, same as Koska in a lot of ways, same, you know, a, a very different enigma in itself because, you know, one minute he's so angry, but in the back of his mind, he's like, this is my family. This is really probably all that I should have asked for or wanted and all this shit. So he finally had it, but he only had it for a split second because he fucking left, bro. Like that year that he was gone, Things could have changed so differently, right? So, or things would have been. That's why I struggle with liking him and not liking him because, you know, I feel like there could have been a move that could have been made and he could have just, you know, they all could have, obviously. I mean, it's all about choices at the end of the day. But I feel like some of his choices were poor based on some anger moves that he had back in the day, which is obviously understandable. But I struggle with that. But to what you were saying, as far as just, him, re- I think he started realizing, like, fuck, my family's gone now, like, gone, gone. You know what I mean? And there ain't no coming back from this. That's why when I had the fear that, you know what, once once they hit hell, I was like, fuck, everybody's going to die. And I think that's where I was like, you know what, hey, he's going to regret hella shit, right? Just like a lot of us do in life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I would have made this move, then, you know, maybe this move wouldn't have happened or whatever you feel me so that's where i was struggling with so him question, Brian. but for him uh-huh question right because i want to dig more you know what i mean um into this love hate thing you got with gus like so does it stem from the choices that he made as far as leaving the hawks and coming back that you conflicted with well yeah i mean that plus Every single one of his, you know, because I think, think about it. When he first tapped in, lost to Griffin, they wound up being in the same lane together for three years. Remember, we fast forwarded three years later. You know, he was already engrossed with the Army. He was, I think he was second in command or whatever, right? So he was already high up on the ranks, well-respected by everybody, right? It took a minute for the crew to actually warm up to him, right? So they gave him a lot of love. And, you know, I get it. He's uncomfortable. You know what I mean? He he didn't want to celebrate. He was more of a loner anyways. But his struggle was like, don't just struggle no more, bro. Just embrace what's here. You know what I mean? Like, he could have took Griffin's army and left Griffin. Maybe they would have backtracked around based on fate or whatever, but he could have took his army, Casca, and they could have just went about their business, especially – I'm, okay, so I'm saying this, Troy. They shouldn't have went and rescued Griffin. Period. Uh, after that year, they should let that uh, shit go. Uh so you. Uh, okay, so you feel like instead of leaving, I mean, but Gus is loyal though. Like, know what I mean, like Gus is very loyal. I know. Like, if, if, I know. If Gus would have stayed, and that happened to Griffin still. That nigga would have went off the edge to get him back, bro. But he I didn't know because know he was gone for the year. So he didn't know he was going through that until he came back. You know what I'm saying? But if he was around and that shit went down, like, Gus would have been dropping bodies, bro. I know. That's what I struggle <laughs> with, man, because I wish he knew. Hey, Troy, I wish he knew what we knew when it came right. to him. Right, right, right. right and then right. he could have made a choice, right? But... You know, life is full of choices, my nigga. Like, at the same time, I'm still feeling like, bruh, Guts could have just left, man. He could have left with Costco, and then that would have been it, bruh. And everybody would have still been safe. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But at least it wouldn't have had them go down that hellish pathway, right? So that's, yeah, that's my whole struggle with that. Not the character. The character is beautifully written, you know, complex, creative. Um, passionate, angry, loving mm-hmm. at the same time, all that shit wrapped up into one guy, Guts, right? So I don't I don't not hate him, hate him. 
I just I hate his choices, bro. Like some of his choices, I feel. I mean, but look though, you know, once again, big ups to Kentaro, Kentaro Miura, man, because you know he's he's able to evoke emotions and thoughts and uh, ideas about these characters, man. You know what I'm saying from from his audience, bro. You know what I'm saying because. I know me personally, man, like, during the eclipse when uh, they 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 all finally got branded with the brand of sacrifice, and the brand of sacrifice means basically, nigga, you're fucked. You're fucked. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what it means. Like, you're not getting that shit off. You're fucked. You know what I'm saying? But I know when I saw Guts finally get it, I was like, oh, that's how he got that shit. Because I didn't forget about episode one. I'm right. like, oh, okay, that's how he got this shit, man. You know what I mean? And um, I was just like, wow, you know, like the writing in this shit is amazing. But um, It's funny that you mentioned that, though, because I didn't start reflecting on that until after it was over. Like, after it was over, I remembered he had the same branding, and I'm like, Oh, okay. But it didn't hit me right at that moment. It literally, I started thinking about it days on end. And okay. I probably like maybe third, fourth day, I, re- I I was like, wait a minute. He had that shit on him to begin. Right. So, okay. So then it made sense, right? So that's, that's when it hit me. It didn't hit yeah. me right then and there, though. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, back to the eclipse, man. So you know, he's in the pool of blood. Now the demons at this point, and that's that's something else that was really creepy about the whole thing because it's not like these are mindless, unconscious demons that just you know like zombies. These shits got personalities. Like these shits was taught in guts by floating the dead bodies of his comrades in their mouth. Sure did. You know, he was, they, they was using them as decoys, laughing at them. Like, that's what made it even more creepy is them shits had personality. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, mm-hmm. this shit is Right? So, next thing you know, man, um, they got Casca fully in the nude. Like, you know what I mean? Getting ready to violate her, man. In the most horrific way. You know what I'm saying? And the nigga gut, you know, he go full berserk mode. Like, he like, yo, like, man, he trying to get to her, right? So, um, but my man Arm end up getting bit by an apostle, man. My man Arm end up getting hemmed up. And when that shit happened, bro, like when his arm got bit, that's when, yo, listen, like my first viewing, that's when I was like, okay, Gus, how, how are you not going to die right now? I'm like, nigga, how are you and Costco gonna get out of this shit? Because at this point in the game, it's just y'all two left as far as the Hawks, literally. This y'all too right. I'm like, what are you gonna do, bro? And next thing you know, Griffin's transformation, his metamorphosis, his rebirth is complete. You now, I man, and we are officially introduced to who is known now as Fento, man. You know, Fento is officially the fifth God Hand member. You know what I mean? He got everything he asked to idea of evil for the wings all that you know what I'm saying you know he's like it's it's so genius too because he still got the structure of the helmet on but it's not a helmet no more like the helmet is a part of his new design basically but it's it's thorough because he resembles a hawk even with the wings right. it looks like he resembles a hawk like, you know what I'm saying and um the first thing he does. What's the first thing he does, man? Soon as soon as Femso hit the scene, what's the first thing he does, man? How does you feel about this shit? You 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 ain't talking about him raping Costa, are you? Exactly what I'm talking about. Listen, I saw that and and like I said, this you know, we, we diving deep into it now, so and this oh, is yeah. like the twenty five the twenty five the 25 episodes plus the you know the one little movie joint where you see it in its entirety and 
the fact that Fento, aka Griffin, is doing this full body with no remorse, like as a game, I guess you could say, taunting his race in front of uh, Gut, uh, pissed me the fuck off, bro. I ain't go front. Um, because when you meld and, and mesh these characters together, everybody has their arcs, right? Everybody has their journey. Everybody has a story to be told. Everybody has their highs and low moments. Um, this one right here did something to me, bro, because watching it in its entirety and just the fact that I felt like there was like a smirk going on, even though you could, you could, I could feel it, not necessarily see it, uh, bothered me, bro. Like, and lives were going to change. Even if she was to stay alive or be alive, things was not going to be what it was. Not just because of what Griffin transformed into, but the fact that he's like, now, fuck you, guts. I'm going to go ahead and take this because I feel like I can now. And you ain't got shit to do about it. So while Gus is still with his arm uh, still caught up, there was nothing else he could do except go ahead and fill in the rest, bro. Bro. <laughs> Yo, on first viewing, when I saw this man, because look, you gotta think, man, like, going through and experiencing all of that up to that point where now his arm is bitten and his woman is being violated, all sense of rationality been went out the window a long time ago. Yep. You yep. know what I'm saying? Straight out the window, bro. So, by the time this man start hacking and chopping at his arm to free himself so he could attempt to stop what's going on bro like uh that shit bro like <laughs> nigga you talking about you felt that i felt that like, i'm like bro like nigga, i was holding my own arm watching that shit bro. i was like man like you know what i mean but that's a true sense of irrationality like guts is going insane too in a way because bro like it's already painful enough having your arm clenched in between teeth. That's already painful enough. Right. But right. you got a broken sword now because you was trying to get at the demon and the shit cracked the sword. So so now you got a broken sword with all type of sharp edges on it and you're hacking at your arm, man. Now I mean like yo bro, most people even if they got that idea, most people on first stab, like, all right, never mind, that's a bad idea. I'm not going to do that no more. Exactly. You know? Because your exactly. mind going to tell you to stop. Your mind going to tell you to yep. stop. But gut yep. is not. He's chopping at that shit, and he ends up ripping his damn arm off, man. And, um, you know, but to no avail, because the demons still hold him down and force him to watch what's going on. Now, bro, I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to add another layer on to why that moment is so uh, poignant, man, and uh, fucked up, bro, because not for nothing, when Guts and Costco first made it, they copulated. They, you know, she was pregnant, man, like she had his child, and when, um, you know, she was... You know, in the early stages, obviously. But when that happened, Griffin basically terminated and, you know, a, uh, he, like, he corrupted they, they unborn child, you know what I'm saying? Which, wow. goes, which, 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 which goes way further in the manga, you know what I mean? But he corrupted their unborn wow. child. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. You know, um that's what that's what made it even more like you know what I'm saying? like, yo, it's so many layers to that moment. Like it's not just you know what I'm saying, like like he did a lot in that moment, bro. But that's 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 one of them, bro. Like like he and ends up corrupting their child. And um Damn. Yeah. 
So yeah, fucking um once once that's done the eclipse itself is shattered and the skull knight comes through, man. He comes through the portal, you know what I'm saying? And this is one of the illest scenes in anime history I've ever seen, but when he first comes through that portal, man, and on on impact, he's headed towards Void, right? And he takes a swing at him. Void mm-hmm. does the uh, portal defense to try to block his attack, and it transports to and back to Skull Knight, and he blocks his own goddamn attack. Like, that shit was the bomb when I first saw that shit. But the Skull yeah. Knight, you know, he done been through this shit before, so he, you know, he's slaying through these apostles, man. He dodges Femto's attack like it's nothing, man, and he saves Guts and Casca's life, man. So when that happened, how much closure did that bring to you when you first saw that? Because I know they ain't show that in the anime, you know? Nah, they didn't show it in the anime, which really fucked me up because, you know, here I was at the time trying to figure out, what happened or what's going to happen? What happened to Costco? What's going to happen to Guts? Everything around them was dead already, so did they die? Like, that was, like, the cliffhanger that drove me fucking crazy. So when I got a chance to catch the, uh, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, either the movie or the extension, the extended version of the end, then I got a chance to see exactly what transpired. Um, I felt relieved but also i felt like oh this is i mean they're fucked for life no matter what if they would have died or them still being alive or whatnot because who's coming back from that troy who's coming back from that and if they can how you know what i mean like it's just again hella metaphorical real life scenarios when you have certain real to life situations like that in somebody's mind, you're thinking, fuck, I don't know if I can overcome this. Right. Especially right. Costco, though. Yeah, man. Because if we want to replay her, her, her story, wasn't she abused and raped and all this shit by other men before Griffin got to her? Yeah, see, see, see look, all right, now, boom. I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned that because I almost forgot that next point I, I wanted to make about that scene being so multi-layered, right? So, um, when Griffith first met Casca, she was a little girl, and um, she was about to get violated, you know what I mean? You know, her her parents sold her over to some family and all that, and, um, and the man was about to have his way with her, right? And, you know, she was a young girl, man. You know, like she was like 9, 10, some shit. Like, she was young, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's how they got down back in the uh, medieval times for the most part, right? So, Griffith, he comes along, and he saves her from being violated. Now, how ironic is it you save her from being raped only to do it later on in life? Listen. You know that's how much that got me too. That moment yeah. is bro, like it's like damn, you save her from being raped only to do it later on. You corrupt her child, and then not only that, bro, but as we find out, man, you know, during the aftermath of the eclipse, man, and, um, you know, guts lost the eye. You know, what I mean, you know, he lost his right eye, you know what I'm saying, um, from an apostle, he lost his arm, he's bandaged up, he's, you know, going through his own thoughts and emotions, and we find out, man, that Casca has regressed to that of a, you know what I mean, of a child, man, you know, like, she's she's not the same Casca no more, like, you know what I mean, like, her, her mind completely warped, you know what I mean, into something else, bro. Like, you know, she's not her no Right. Way. She don't even know guts. Right, and that, that to me was sad, just on the strength of, I mean, sad, but then again, I'm going to put it like this, Troy. I mean, you come back from a traumatic moment like that, do you really want to remember that? Like, to be real? Um, but also, 
it it it, it takes me it, it just takes me to to true to life situation that I know a lot of women go through when they're raped and they have a traumatic rape and they have a situation where they don't want to remember it so they compartmentalize it and their memory gets lost or they do it you know unintentionally but intentionally in a sense you know what I mean so you know how she regressed to the kid that she used to be was probably the only place she could have gone while she was going through that trauma of being in hell getting attacked by monsters and getting raped by Griffin right so she had nowhere else to go because she saw remember that moment she saw or she saw uh, Guts looking at her she told Guts to don't look at me right right you know what I mean yo yo listen and they both was crying man like nigga that shit bro man like that shit is so listen um that's something that I do give the Eclipse credit on, man, and the genius of Kentaro Miura once again, man, because it's so horrific, memorable, fucked up, beautiful, all in the same time, because, bro, like, yeah. how can I go through all of that? Like, look, how can I be horrified, but still beautify by the fact that damn judo had feelings for Costa or you know Pippin went out like a soldier like or yep. you know what I mean damn, you know like I'm going through hella emotions right now watching this scene with Costa like you know what I'm saying like you go through mad mm -hmm. different emotions while you during this dimension you know what I'm saying that they that, that, that they in bro it's like bro like that's the genius of Kentaro. It's like I'm I'm just not terrified throughout this whole thing. I'm terrified nah. when it's like damn, I'm also, you know, going through my own emotions at the same time. You feel me? Emotionally like, conflicted is what I feel like I was uh, going through this because there were so many point in times and moments of these of these uh of these episodes. And then the aftermath movie of it that I just felt like, I mean, you got real feelings towards these real characters. And again, it goes to show you the strength of the character development that was put out there. You know what I mean? And how things transpired between everybody. I mean, you made you want to hate Griffin, made you want to, you know, have these tug of war emotions about, you know, why was Costa so angry and why was, uh, you know, why was Guts so, so, you know, pissy, disrespectful in certain situations or whatnot. But as you fleshed out these characters, you were able to see, especially with Casca and especially with Guts, that, you know, there was a real true journey to their arc that was sad because even they didn't realize what potential they had together. You know what I mean? And that's another metaphor for real true-to-life situations when you are connected to somebody and you just really don't see what that potential is until it's too late. You know what I mean? And that's the and that's the fucked up thing about it because it did have me going through an emotional roller coaster, but also I couldn't stop watching. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, I just bro, couldn't stop. <laughs> Yo, bro, like, and it's, it's powerful what you just said because even prior to the eclipse, Remember when the Hawks approached Guts and they said that we want to go with you and then Guts had that voice um, to say to him, like, damn, you know, why do I realize what I have until it's gone? Yes. Yes. He, he That's said what that I mean, him, man. That's what... Prior to the oh. eclipse. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Like, that was a powerful that part. moment. That was a powerful moment, and and then yo, bro, in the third movie, man, you know the uh, one I sent to you, man, like the one that really did it for me, especially on a sentimental level, was when Guts was just running, my nigga, like having his memories of the Hawks, and he just trying to run from what happened, and he, you know, what I'm saying, like he just confused, bro. He's 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 yo, bro, like that. That what did it for me right there. That that's what did it, man. Like you know what I'm saying. And then 
he just let out a howl at the end, man, because he was just defeated. He was defeated in that moment right there, like, real talk. He woke up, put two and two together that he was still alive, found out that Kafka was still alive, and the fact that she didn't remember him hurt my soul. But to your point, when he just right. left, he just ran out. He just ran because he had, you know, remember, this guy used to be a loner, bro. Right. So man. if he being a loner and, you know, he didn't have to compartmentalize his emotions, right, because he was by himself. So this is raw emotion coming from that character because he truly found you know, too little, too late, I hate to say, but he really and truly found his real true calling outside of being a mercenary because he got attached to the family, he fell in love, and he saw it all get crumbled in bits, right? So that really and truly got me, bro, because you start thinking about your own life and how you live it, and you start thinking about, like, what could have, should have, would have, right? Like, you start thinking about a lot of shit that's not necessarily similar to, you know what I'm saying, certain paths that these people took, but it is very parallel in a sense of, like, true-to-life missions or situations or whatever you want to call it. But if anything that I know can take it from this, I know this shit is, is, is one of the best emotional roller coaster rides that I've ever had, bro. Real talk. Ah oh, man, yo, listen, listen. I'm I'm so honored that I was able to put you up on game, man, about this show, man, because this is one that, on first viewing, man, like I was telling everybody about this shit. You know, like, I was telling all my people that that's real hardcore anime heads, like, bro, like y'all need to check this out. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the storyline is up there with some of the best. You know what I mean? You know, like. It's a lot of shows that people put up there as the best animes of all time because of the story and the characters and whatnot, and Berserk is up there with it. Like, Berserk is top two for me, personally, you know what I'm saying? But um, I want to ask you a question, though, man. You know, so we we summed up what's known as the Golden Age arc, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Golden Age is everything that you've seen so far of Berserk, you know what I'm saying? So... And now that we mm-hmm. covered the uh, golden age for the most part, I want to ask you a couple of questions, man. So, um, the first one is, I know for me, I ask myself this. I'm like, damn, if I was in the shoes of Griffith in that moment, you know, when they was offering him to be re- reborn, what would I do? You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's like, bro, like, like his body was in shambles. Like, he couldn't do shit. It's like, bro, it like it poses the question of what would you do in that situation? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm not asking you what would you do, but I'm saying, you know, how how do you view his decision in that moment? You know what I'm saying? Because it's this thing in the community, people love to say he did nothing wrong, he did everything wrong, and what they meant by that was his choice. He did everything wrong by sacrificing the Hawks. He did nothing wrong by sacrificing the Hawks. How do you feel about that, bro? His whole arc uh, foretold a story that I think he knew bits and pieces of how things were going to go. I think it went a little left in a lot of different directions. I think the choice he made as far as to be reborn, to answer your question, um, I, I, I'm, I'm conflicted on this, on this account because I know I wouldn't do what he did because no, to me, me. Even, even go, yeah, even if you go back, you know, to him being a youngin, you know, certain situations would have led me to believe that, you know what, I'm destined to die, and I'm probably going to take a handful of people with me. Mm-hmm. So maybe I would be a little bit more conflicted to either take out my own life, and I hate saying this, but, you know, so I, I, could, I could make sure that people don't go through what I'm about to go through, because what I'm about to go through, I may not have control over it no more. 
And I think that's where it gets a little jaded between my feelings for him and what could have been or should have been prevented versus the choice that he had to make while he was in that hellish place, right? Because maybe as a – maybe even – you know, that all depends, though. It all depends on if he actually cared, which I don't feel like he did. He was a master manipulator. You got to remember that. So a lot of what he did, he wanted to do. So his choice was really like, I'm going to take this choice because I'm selfish anyways, and I'm just going to do shit just in spite of, a.k.a. the rape of Casca and, and letting – gut see that period you know what i mean so if he really had any source of human remorse even at a young age something would have shifted his way of thinking if he wanted everybody to live in a tranquil uh happy place or whatnot but i don't think he ever did i i really and truly don't troy i don't think he did and i don't think he really knew what he was getting himself into as a youngin, and then as he got older, and even when he was locked up for a year, you know, frail, skin and bones, damn near death on his deathbed, he still didn't think it through until that last piece, and that last piece was them coming to save him. Because I think, if anything, especially when he heard the whispers of, oh, I think, I, you know, between Kafka and Gus, like, oh, you know, we should lead together, blah, blah, blah that sparked him to realize what his mission was, and that's why he left and did what he did, and everything went down the way it did. So he just reminded himself of where he needed to be. And, you know, I don't know if that answers your question, but no, no, no. that that basically puts me in that lane. I I I worry, man. Because I know, you know, it, listen, like this story poses a lot of questions, man, because – it's it's realistic, n- n- not in a dark fantasy, exaggerated sort of way, but it's realistic on a level that it happens on a human basis every day. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk, you right? Know, right. Every single day, whether it's yo damn, let me sacrifice this employee for that employee. <laughs> you know what I'm exactly. saying? I'm going to replace no, you're right. you're that right. person. You know what I mean? Like, like it happens on a human level every day, bro. But yeah, you know, I listen. Like this, this story um, is definitely one for the books, man. Um, you know, I'm I'm a fanatic of it, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know. It, look, listen, my experience when I finished that 25th episode back in 2013, I didn't know about any movies. I didn't know about that. So I was left at the wow. clip You know what I'm saying? So me, I was so hyped and so uh, left unfulfilled by that last episode, bro. Like, I immediately, because I knew that it was based on the manga, I immediately went to Google, and I said, Berserk Manga. I looked that shit up. <laughs> I to the chapter of the eclipse, and I kept reading. I was like, I need to know what happened. I needed to know. Mm. And, bro, like, I was never a manga reader like that, but Berserk is the first manga that I really committed to, and I was reading faithfully. I read a number of volumes, and um, the the aftermath and what happens after the eclipse it's way darker. It's so much more darker. It's so much more action packed. The storylines is crazy. A new cast of characters comes along to help guts along his uh his his path and to make him relearn that lesson of it's nothing wrong with having a team. Because after the eclipse, guts is on some solo black swordsman. I just want revenge. Shit. I don't want nobody near right. me. Sort of. But he slowly starts to get that lesson, that life lesson, like, yo, there's nothing wrong with having people on your team. And, and uh, Kafka, she's she's still around, but um, f- for the most part, she's being protected by Guts 
And sometimes she becomes a liability because, you know, she because she still got that brand of sacrifice on her as well, too, even in that state. So, you know, right. demons that should be coming towards her guts got her. Yo, it's a whole lot, bro. Like, it's so Damn, much. Damn, bro. The berserk Damn. world, man. That's ridiculous, bro. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? But um, wow. I don't know if you wow. have, you know, more to say about it. You know, I'll let you talk, you know what I'm saying? I just think in, in you know, in closing, um, you know, I, I think we talked about this before this show that, you know, if I could say something to any of these characters, like, what would I say? Oh, oh, right, right, um, right. Yeah. I would, I would literally, you know, the same shit I said about Guts, I would tell him, like, bro, like, I mean, it's, it's too late now, but I just wish you would have, you would have wised up on what you really had before things went down the way it did, right? Because I think, if anything, I would literally would, would have loved to talk to him. Just, man, just get cops, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, just go. Like, you know, if something if something's eating at you to the point where even after um they save Griffin and then Griffin storms off and goes somewhere on his own, just let that man go. Just let him go. You know what I mean? If he if he's in a situation where he just want to leave and be done, just go. Let that man go be his man and don't chase him because by chasing him, I don't know if that led to, you know, him getting a sense of where he wanted to do. And like I said, who knows what the future may uphold of whatever choice that would have been made, right? Like I would have just been like, that nigga gone. All right, bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bye. Me, Bye. <laughs> Bye. Costco, you and I, we still going to go ahead and be what we was going to be. We going to set out to leave, and everybody else will want it to leave, Troy. They all wanted to leave. That I mean, last final hurrah to go save Griffin yeah. turned into everybody dying, bro. Like, that was it. After Griffin made a choice to get in that, that care that horse carriage and and leave. I don't know another lesson learned, bro. I ain't chasing nobody like that, bro. Like if you leave, get the bye. Fuck out of here, man. That's it. I mean, but Brand, done. All right, so look though, right? So I listen. I I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, right? But you also cannot forget. And like this poses this poses another question that some fans had of whether Casca was in love with both of them. Guts and Griffiths because it's like I think she was, I think she was. I I think I think if anything, I think you know because prior to all this, Casca was super loyal to Griffin, super loyal. Oh yeah, loyal. Maybe a little jealous when um when Guts came into the scene, you know, trying to take her position or whatever. I don't know. She felt threatened or whatever, but it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, she felt that way. So, yeah, she was torn between, you know, who to love, really. You know what I mean? And I think, if anything, I think Casca knew by Griffin being promiscuous with men and with women that he had, he was on something else. You know what I mean? I think Casca knew that. I don't think Griffin, I don't think, uh, sorry, I don't think Guts knew that. But I think Casca did. So Casca probably saw him more of, and I could be wrong, more on a brotherly type of hype or that love or whatever. I don't. I didn't sense anything romantic though. Yeah. With oh. with, with Casca and Guts though, I felt some tension right off top though. You know what I mean? Even during their fight after Griffin you know, fought and beat him, and then that, you know, you jump to three years later, they still had, like, some tension. You know, I don't know about you, Troy. You be around somebody for three years, and if you still feel this certain way, it's got to be something more to that. You know what I mean? And I think it was that more was feelings for each other that they didn't want to explore. I mean, real talk, I can agree with the – brotherly aspect that Costco may have on um, Griffith post her and Gus mating, you know what I'm saying? Because I know that she, you know, like she wasn't going to leave that man's side. Even in that state, nah. like she refused.
refused. Like, she started crying about this. I know. Like, she was messed up about that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she did not want to leave that man, bro. And, you know, she was on some shit like, yo, guts, you know, uh, um, don't let this compromise what you got going on. You know, or you can still leave if you want. Guts like, man, this, this nigga... I'm here now, I might as well stay, you know what I'm saying? Like, real talk, I might as well stay. But they both was conflicted over Griffith. They both was, you know what I'm saying? Like, they both didn't know whether they wanted to abandon him or stay. Especially Guts Griffin. respected Griffin. Guts respected him. Um, and I think over the years, he's really he was really enamored by, you know, his, you know, his leadership or whatnot. So Guts was definitely... Uh, you know, loyal. Casca obviously was. Day one, all that, right? I just feel like somewhere along that line, depending on what and really how you truly feel about a man or a woman's motive, you know, if it doesn't, and see, this kind of goes back again to real life. So, you know, that's why it's important for people out there to really align themselves with somebody that has the same similar mission you got may not be perfect, but if your agenda is really in lockstep with that other person's, then you wouldn't have any questions, doubts, or underlining reservations about what it is that they want to do because you already know it's already out there, transparent, and all that shit, right? I feel like this. In this particular scenario, there was too many conflicting things where, you know what, you're trying to recruit a man who literally was a loner, but then you saw some strength in what that man was all about, so you chose to, like, you know what, hey, uh, you know, fuck that. He has enough strength so I can go ahead and create an army that can basically uh, monetize my whole mission as far as what I wanted to do. And I think what you said earlier, Troy, dead bodies, I think he needed a lot of them to get to that point, you know what I mean? So I think a lot of it's connected, but also I feel like this is, like, the one true thing that I really and truly feel when it comes to certain things with him being Griffin is I don't think that he thought a lot of it through because of how things went down. The end result could have been what it was, but I still feel like he stumbled along the way. But I don't believe in I don't believe in being around somebody like that for too long because then you start seeing different different things again. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah, how man. you gonna go through life, Troy? Like if you got if you got a, a a boss leader, somebody sweeping around with men and women just so they can be able to get their agenda uh, across and have some something hey, come on man. That's uh, vindictive, bro. Vindictive. Right. Real talk. Very, very vindictive. Very man. Very. Um yeah, so um, what's the name? Uh, you were saying how you know like the uh, things that you would say to the characters, right? So you said something to Gus. Mm-hmm. All right, so who next, Casca or Griffin? Gr- Griffin, I kind of already said, it, bro. Like I'm like, you know what? Hey, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. Like, <laughs> like on the real, like uh, literally, he he didn't. Le- I mean, he manipulated his army to his to his liking. So I I really couldn't say nothing to him other than you 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 fucking asshole, bro. Like you an asshole for the obvious reason. You led everybody down a dark path because you knew at the end of the day all the strong men and women, you know, Kafka obviously, you know, that you recruited, you was gonna manipulate them to either killing them or, you know what I'm saying, you know, being your servants or whatever it was that you wanted to do. So you know what, Griffin, kiss my ass, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, so Costco. And Costco, Costco, you know what, sis, it's just sad. I mean, you know, knowing that I know now the fact that she survived this, you know, I just, I understand. I understand. I mean, I understand nothing will never, ever, ever in life be the same. I can imagine. I can, I can, I can understand to a degree. 
I just know, I just know she earned this status, bro. She did just based yeah. on her leadership, her, her, you know, determination, all that motherfucking shit, bro. So Costco sister me now, bro. So the fact that she got what she got not only hurt my heart, but it, it was, it was, it was a moment where I was just like, man, it's just, I, I lost sleep thinking about her, bro. Like that's just on the real. Bro. Oh man. All right, all right, all right. All right, so me, um, shit, man. I'm going to start with Griffith. Fuck you, man. You did everything wrong. <laughs> you already know this. You did everything wrong. Fuck Griffith, man. All day long, man. But I will say he is a fantastic antagonist. A great antagonist. Oh, no doubt. Like, you know no man? doubt. Because he is by far the number one antagonist that I despise the most in fiction. And if you could get me to feel that sort of way, then you did a great job. Kentaro Miura, you did a great job in the character of Hands Griffin. Down. Because I cannot Word stand up. that motherfucker. But at the same time, I could see, even though I don't agree with everything, I could see why he did what he did, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I could... I could understand it, you know what I mean? I could understand you not um, giving a fuck about these 400 more bodies when you already got 1,000, 2,000 bodies. I don't agree with it, mm. but I understand mm. why you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, uh, I don't agree or understand why you will sleep with men to get m- monetary gains, but it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, but Griffith is a great antagonist, man, because I have never in anything that I've watched despised a motherfucker as much as I despise him. But I also appreciate what he's contributed to the story because if it wasn't a Griffith, we wouldn't have Berserk, point blank. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Straight we up. We wouldn't have Berserk, like, you know what I'm saying? Um... Casca, um, Casca is one of my favorite women characters in fiction as well because of just her journey, man. You know what she's been through in her childhood, her trials and tribulations, her emotional episodes, her outbursts, her battle skills. You know what I mean? I I respect Casca. In the utmost, man, and um, her story is a tragic one, especially with her, you know, going through amnesia and not knowing herself or anybody post the eclipse, man. But I will, I will tell you this, though, Brian. I will, I will tell you this. Um, you know, um, it's a spoiler, but I'm pretty sure you can appreciate this spoiler, man. Um, one of the last few chapters that Kentaro released in the um, recent years was a chapter when Casca went through a process of basically getting her memories back. And it was a long mm. time she ended up getting her memories back due to um, a witch that they have on their side who's a real honest witch. You know, like she got a... Um, good intentions and she helped go into her subconscious and to get her memories back for a short term and um it's still sad though man because guts is a trigger himself and she can't really be around guts like that but they no doubt they had a brief conversation and it was just beautiful seeing her back to herself even if it was just for a moment bro and that shit damn near right. made me cry all that shit man but, wow! Um, yeah, you know she's she's one to remember, man, for sure, for sure. She That's it, flat- bro. That's I it. Love huh? That's it, bro. That's this honorary sis right there, bro. Yeah, real hell yeah. talk. She sis, like she big sis. Real talk, she she big sis. Exactly. Man. Um, guts, man. Guts. Guts is that guy, you know what I mean, like, Guts goes against fate itself, man, you know, I, 
I definitely um, put Guts up there as one of my favorite protagonists ever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, real talk, because he, de- like, he constantly defies the odds. Even, yo, listen, especially poster eclipse. Like, poster eclipse, he continuously defies the odds, man, because something else I put you on Game of Ball 2, Brand, is um this whole eclipse thing, like that whirlwind, like that basically merged the astral realm with the physical realm in a sense. So I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Right. I knew it. A lot of apostles and stuff start to get released in the physical world. And then when this happens, Griffith, he goes through a process of being reborn in the physical world himself because when he turns into Femto, he was strictly astral, but he goes through something to become physical again. But as this is happening, it's basically a new world religion in a sense, and everybody is worshiping the hawk. Griffith now... And look, look, right, yo, bro, like, this shit going to fuck your head up. Griffith in post-eclipse world, he's looked at as Jesus. He's like a Jesus mm. figure that people worship. They think he's a savior. Boom, boom, boom. And look how he's drawn. Like, he's drawn in all white. He look angelic, right? But now yeah. Gus, Gus is looked at as the Antichrist. He's that black right, soul right. trying to go against what people look at as their savior. Now I mean? So Kentaro Miura is a genius in that because he created a world to whereas the motherfucker who's the real hero is looked at as the devil, and the devil is Damn. looked at as the angel. You know what I mean? Damn. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I see it. I see it. I see. Listen, I mean... A lot of people say there's a thin line between all this shit, right? So, I mean, literally, there's a thin line between love and hate, thin line between heaven and hell, too, bro. Like, a lot right. of times where you think you're, 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 uh, you're fucking, you're a gene, you're, you know, you're literally the devil in disguise. You know what I mean? People say that shit all the time, Troy. Right. All the time. Wow. 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 That's crazy, right? Real talk. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow. That's why I say, like, shit gets so real in the manga, man. And um, hopefully one day we see a proper adaptation, a studio that really makes the animation crisp and it goes on past the eclipse. Hopefully we can see that one day. But if not, we still have the illustrious and brilliant work of Kentaro Miura and his manga, man. If people want to read it and find out what happens more. It's like look, just like the anime or the movies had you hooked, that manga will have you hooked. Do not sleep on the manga, man. Like that shit kept me up at night. But also I will warn people that the manga is not for everybody. You know what I mean? It's it's, mm-hmm. it's it's not for everybody. It's extremely graphic. It's extremely dark and it gets and even myself, it got to a point where I was reading it, and I had to ask myself, like, damn, should I be reading this shit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this shit is yeah. serious, you know what I mean? But the story is so addicting, man. And my last question for you, bro, like, what age range would you recommend Berserk? You know what I'm saying? Because we got thousands, millions of listeners, man. Like, you never know a uh, uh, a teenager may be listening to us right now talking about Berserk. What age range would you recommend this manga slash slash anime, man? You you and I kind of talked about this um, a little bit, but uh, I think I'm going to change my opinion to the opinion that I had before. I think, if anything, I want to say, I want to say 16 and up, 16 mm. and up. I think sixteen and up, and I think, and I put it like this: I think if, 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 I mean, because there's a lot of mature teenagers or whatever, so that's why I put sixteen. So if you hovering over fifteen, fourteen, you know, thirteen or whatever, you know, fine, it is what it is. But your level of maturity needs to be as such where this needs to be an open discussion 
between you and an adult, two of you guys as teenagers, whatever the case may be, because obviously as adults, you and I, Troy, have questions or we have reservations or we have mixed emotions about certain things. This particular anime should be discussed. And if you're younger and in in a situation where you feel like, you know, you want to explore this type, then you need to have the open mind to want to have dialogue with somebody. I think that is important because keeping it to yourself is not going to do good because you're going to go on an emotional roller coaster, I promise you. And if you're, if you, even if you have a mature mind, so to answer your question, teenager, obviously, but with a disclaimer, you need to talk to somebody, period, yeah. about it. Hell yeah. I agree with you, bro. I agree. You know what I'm saying? You know, I feel like that's the proper age, man. Um, I know even even with a mature mind, it's still going to fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. I'm fucked up right now, too, bro. I was, like, 20, like, listen, I was 20 when I first saw this, and, man, like, did it leave an impact on me, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like, you grown grown man, and this got you wrapped up in your feelings. So I already know, bro, yeah. like, even – the mature teens, like, watch it with somebody, you know what I'm saying? You know, they could be your age or older, but just watch it with somebody. Like, you don't want to watch this by yourself unless you really bought that life like that. I don't know. You know, like, nigga, you really <laughs> bought that life like that. If you bought that life like that, then, okay, watch Berserk, read Berserk alone then, nigga. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Troy, like, listen, listen, I ain't even about that life, and I'm a grown motherfucking man, boy. <laughs> I am not about that life. Like, you know how long it's taken me to want to talk to you about this, but we had to set it on the stage that would do that would do it justice, right? But, bruh, I ain't about that life. I promise you. <laughs> Straight up. Hey, listen, man. Hey. You, man. Um, yo, bro, like, this was good, man. Listen, people, like, this is our first chapter of many chapters of the anime chapters, man, that, you know, are we going to be dissecting and talking about animes, you know what I'm saying, different shows. We had to kick it off with a strong one, man. We had to kick it off with one that I personally love. Brand now got at the top of his list, said it changed his life, man. So we're going to be doing this some more, man. Like, this is, you know what I'm saying? Like, this and. Not- let me add on to this. This this chapter, this the anime chapters on Next Legacy is not going to be, we're just not going to take every single goddamn anime and turn it into a chapter. We're going to have to have chapters that you, the people, want, that we are enamored with, that we can go ahead and dissect in detail and get the people what y'all want. If y'all want this, you know what I'm saying, we open to have an open discussion to whatever is motivating you as well. So you know what? This won't be, I don't even want to say, Troy, this is going to be something we're going to do weekly, monthly, or whatever. We're going to do it as a chapter turn. You know how writers are. You're a writer. What's going to motivate us is going to be you, the people, but also us as as we consume some of the anime that you might want to uh, have a conversation about. So it's going to be up to the people as well. Yeah, man. And... Whatever show we pick, it got to be a heavy hitter because this show is a heavy hitter and then some. So we got to have Word up. Ill, Ill caliber shows as chapters, man. But we had to kick this one off with the legendary Berserk by the late, great Kentaro Miura. Rest in peace. Happy birthday when this air, man. You know what I'm saying? And... <laughs> Make sure you don't get that brand of sacrifice, people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Word up, yo. Word up. <laughs> so until the next chapter is turned, on behalf of Troy Mindright, I am Brandy. We appreciate all y'all.